All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first race of the day uh, for our Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee tournament. Um, I'm Yosarian, and I'm joined by Poketax attorney. <laughs> How are you doing this morning? You can just call me Poketax. Poketax. Good. We, this is uh, this is going to be a great race this morning. We've got uh, three racers who each won their first rounds. We've got Etiquette. We've got T-Pat, and we've got Saiyan Sank. So um, get yourself a snack. Stay hydrated. This is going to be a fun race. Um, as you can see, our runners are about to get going here. We're going to get started here in about 10 seconds. So um, again, it's yeah, be all, a great race. All three of these racers have very, very good time. So this should be really exciting to see uh, how this ends up. And we're going to have two of them playing on Eevee, and then Saiyan's going to be on Pikachu. So we'll have a little differences there at the beginning before they ultimately converge uh, when we get our last starter of the run. Yep. Uh, so we're just about to get started, and we're, we're, and we're off. Um, so just for perspective on these three runners, um, I, I was commentating Etiquette's first round run, um, and he's number five in the world in, in terms of PB for uh, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Um, but he's walked into quite the snake pit today because uh, T-Pat, Thomas Patrick, uh, you'll call, you'll just call him T-Pat, uh, has the fourth best <laughs> PB in Eevee, and Saiyan Sank is the world record holder in Pika. Uh, so this is going to be quite a race today. Yeah, and as we saw yesterday, just because you have a better time in round one or a better time on the leaderboard does not mean that you're going to win, of course, uh, when it comes to the race. Because anything can happen from missing hydro pumps to not having certain Pokemon show up to catching a Chansey that overlevels your starter. So I think uh, we're exactly. in for some, some and excitement it, here. And it's, yeah. it'll start right away, right? Because we're going to see right from the beginning... What nature did these these runners have on their EVs or Pikachu's, um, and that will that will have a direct impact. If one of these runners has minus attack or plus attack, um, you know, in, whereas in a round one race they might be able to make up that make up that deficit from either having to restart uh, or uh, just taking the time loss from having that adverse nature uh, here that will have a significant impact. Uh, so making those adjustments, uh, being able to play with adverse circumstances, especially in a race like this, it's, it's even more under the microscope. So we'll be seeing that here very, very shortly. Yeah, absolutely. One thing I'm going to be interested to see is if they prepared backups for their starters, like EVs and Pikachus, or if they're just going to go with it no matter what. Um, because yeah, uh, Pikachu I, I, has I think... Pikachu has more viable starters. Correct me if I'm wrong, but then Eevee can get a lot, a lot more bad natures with the minus attack, minus special attack. But then minus speed is also pretty questionable in some fights. But I'm gonna guess that the runners just all go for it. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think that's right. I think we've been seeing a lot in this tournament, particularly of the top runners, make a, find a way to make it work. Uh, that does a couple of things. One, uh, you save the roughly 35 to 40 seconds of having to reload a backup file. Um, and number two, you know, you don't have to check your nature um, in uh, in Professor Oak's lab, which is another six seconds off your time. Um, I agree with you on Pikachu. There are a lot more runnable natures, um, and there are ways to make them work. Whereas Eevee you're really relying on Eevee. Uh, Pikachu, you can kind of make different things work. Um, yeah, I think we've seen a few people take the backup Eevees. Um, like I believe Randall did yesterday. I know I did in my first round, you know, but I don't know if we've seen a backup Pikachu be taken just because there's a lot more options of viability there, I think. Yeah. I. Personally, I would probably take a backup if I saw a minus attack. Uh, hmm. But there are strats for minus special attack. Uh, 
specifically. So Pika does have additional options. Eevee, um, you know, any of attack, special attack or speed, depending on fight can be adverse, right? If if mm -hmm. you have minus attack, there's a lot of situations where headbutt oh, doesn't etiquette do what you want checking, it to do. Etiquette's checking, we got... Sassy. Which... Bad, so Sassy oh is Pressing not my memory technically... Here. Technically not is... a runnable... Yeah, so that's going to be minus or, speed uh, plus technically not runnable. Defense. That'll be minus speed. Uh, minus speed of the three to have is probably not the worst. Um, mm -hmm. But you do lose certain... You do lo lose uh, s certain spots where you would otherwise think you'd have them. Mm-hmm. Level three. Yeah, and the know. plus um, special defense is like... Okay, that might help against like some of the Jesse James fights or something, but not anything to particularly write home about, I would say, with the EV. But the minus speed, yeah, that'll be interesting. But maybe there's a speed characteristic that'll make up for it, which is always a possibility. Yep. yep. Normally, don't you don't okay. get uh, speed AVs if you have a minus speed nature, but it is still possible because it's a 31. Uh, you have a 31 um, IV in all stats across the board. You have a 1 in 6 chance of getting... Um, any particular nature so he could it could be it could be a speed nature and, and offset some of that uh mm -hmm. that minus speed yeah i wonder what would have made a uh, anakin reset just out of curiosity if he's checking i think um you know etiquette maybe it would have been minus attack has, has i know etiquette in the past has run minus attack natures um you know, I, it's notably the semifinals last year, he ran, I believe, a bold Eevee. Um, Ooh, bold is bold is questionable. <laughs> yeah, he, he ran a bold, and um, unfortunately, that ended up taking quite a bit of time for him. Um, so he, he does tend to check, but historically, he hasn't um, reset all that often. So, Ooh, gotcha. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna get into the rival fights here, and this could yep. potentially actually like be a different uh, a differentiator in the time here. So, oh, and this yeah, this could give us our first bit of information about Saiyan's Pika. Okay, it is not plus defense, um, and it doesn't look like it's plus special attack. So we'll we'll learn more about Saiyans here as we go. Um, I'll keep my eye on on Saiyan screen, see what nature that looks like based off of um, the, the Radita fight that we have coming up here. Um, yeah, and I, watching T yeah, Hat, like, trying to juggle all of these, but it looks like he might be plus attack. Honestly, did quite a quite a chunk of damage there. Um, did did he we'll get see. a two shot there? I, I, he got a two okay. shot, but. Again, watching all the screens, maybe someone in chat saw, but I think he might have crit, um, so that makes it difficult to, to tell. Um, but he did two shot, right, which is, yeah, if... as you can see, T-Pat's now ahead, right? Because that first rival fight can be anywhere from two yep. to, like, seven turns, <laughs> if you're really unlucky. Right, and, you know, we're talking about these runners being very close in time, uh, being able to have a timely crit or have plus attack, you know, be able to save that turn, that's 10 seconds of time. Um, and that's not inconsequential. So, okay. So T-Pat will not see his uh, nature until Caterpie. That's the one kind of humorous difference between... Um, a, a Saiyan appears to have minus defense. Let's see what his plus, his plus is. Because that Radita did four. Uh, that is that is a plus i think i saw plus special attack minus defense um i didn't catch which av that was my screen lagged there for and then a he second. got a he got a speed um, av um as okay well. he got a speed av so yes that's gonna be uh plus special attack minus that's that's a great nature for pika um 
what he'll find is he'll be able to uh, go ahead and uh, take some chances on the Jesse and James fights down the stretch. He may be able to return um, this, the third Jesse and James fight. So that's a really good nature. Uh, Saiyan also going for a catch outside. Um, handy like little that. thing yeah. for handy little thing for newer trainers. There's a newbie bonus up until you walk into Viridian Forest, um, such that even with no, even without hitting a circle, you have a 93% ch catch chance. Um, so you don't have the risk of having three or four breakouts. Uh, I know certain trainers throughout the tournament have had issues with that that one controller having multiple breakouts. So saying going ahead and getting rid of that chance. Let's look at oh, so Ooh. etiquettes. Etiquette got an attack AV there, so that's nice. But he did get an attack AV, so that that is helpful. Did you happen to get a, a uh, look at T Pats? Uh, I didn't deduce the nature, I but I think he got a special defense AV, so nothing so great. But of course, there's okay. nine other levels where you can get to AV, so. Ooh, and again, picking Pika. up a bonus here, getting Pikachu. Uh, so that's a nice find, especially a, a large Pika. Um, oh, so this gives him a Pika. nice amount of experience, assuming he's able to catch it. <gasps> oh, I always hate that Pikachu catch this... for EV. Like, with the berry and the excellent one controller, I think it's, like, still 60% or so. <laughs> Tough break here. Yeah. Actually, at, level, at level 5 or level 6, the, 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 the catch probability goes down really quick. Um, and you see it there. Etiquette getting the second ball catch. But again, that takes time. That was probably 20 to 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Um... And uh, 70 percent yeah. in a in a situation like this this is you know there's not 20 or 30 seconds to spare <laughs> so um i would say the dream for etiquette is to see a bulbasaur now and then he could to see it and then deposit the pikachu before the lure right i think that would be I think he'll probably nice. two see, he'll probably two see this fight regardless, right? Just to take out any possibility. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's going to two see the fight regardless. Use thunder shock mm. on the Pidgey so that you don't have a situation where Pidgey starts using sand attack and troll. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that tactic. Uh, and looking, for me, it always happens when I have a good good nature. I always end up with uh, the sand attack spiraling things out of control. <laughs> okay, Let's so getting see. some initial catches here for both Saiyan and uh, Anti-Pat. Um, At the disadvantage for Saiyan of catching outside, there's two, it's twofold. One, he's going to have to see all these Caterpie level ups, uh, which every time your Pokemon levels up, it takes about two seconds when he plays a little little chime for you and lets you know that it levels up, and a Bulbasaur for etiquette. Uh, yeah, we love to see that. Very nice. And then T-Pack gets the required Bell Sprout. Which is also, well, yep. I guess you could have a Bulbasaur, but need the Bell Sprout to get into Brock's gym. So T Pat has all yep. the catches that are needed, but is actually going to be shy of 10, so he'll need to catch something else because this Eevee yes. needs double kick. And uh, yes. the one trainer that he's going to fight is not going to be enough to get level 10. So he's probably going to go on the outside and look for a Rattata or a Pidgey, unless he sees something you know, else in the forest. But. Probably looking like an so early. So Saiyan is doing. Oh god. No, no. Saiyan is doing Route Two Roulette and is looking for an Oddish here, uh, and he finds it, and it's glowing. That's a great find for Saiyan. Um, you kind of want to have uh, for the best possible run. You kind of want to do um, Route Two Oddish because uh, on this route everything comes at level nine instead of level seven as it does in the forest. Um, that does a couple of things. Number one, it makes the Brock ranges better. So you can actually one-shot the Onyx if you have a, a, a very good. And this is a super-size Oddish for Saiyan. 
Oh my gosh. Um, so he's already up to level 12 on his Pika. Um, Saiyan is in a great spot. Meanwhile, Etiquette going for Kakuna strats here to get that extra experience, which I like as well. So we're seeing a little bit of uh, yeah. advanced strategies, I would say. Because um, usually, you know, you'll catch the Weedle yeah, or the Caterpie. And he gets Caterpie. it first ball. Yeah. Nice. He gets it first ball, yep. So he's not going to run into the issue that T-Pat did, where he's going to be looking for something on, on Route 10. Um, yeah, plus special defense, minus speed, as we talked about for Etiquette. Um, and he's level 10, so he's good. And, uh, yep. Moving right along. Oop. Maybe he thought that T Pat thought that Bell Sprout was something else. <laughs> yeah. And he's going for that glowing Pidgey, it looks like, because again, he needs yeah, to get up to level 10 to get in the gym. Here. This is, I, I would say this is fine because it's glowing. It'll give good experience. Um, it is going to make it trickier from catching 50 Pokemon as we go along. So we'll either need to get uh, Pidgeotto at some point um, or just forego those two Pokemon if things go really well early on. Um, but either way, you know, Eevee's going to get up to level 11, which is very important in the early game. And... Ooh, he has a lot of attack AVs. Like also sassy for, yep. Also sassy uh, on T-Pat, but he's also getting those those attacks, so. Um, yeah, 26 so attack at sassies. level 10 is very good. I think that means three attack AVs, yeah, if my nice. memory serves correct. So that's, that's pretty right. great. Because I think uh, no attack AVs, EV level 10 is 23. So I think that means he got three attack AVs, which is really good. Yeah, so good good EV there for T-Pat. Had to overcome, you know, uh, not getting to level 10 right away, so he picked up the Pidgey. Um, and as you said, Yuzarian, he can pick up a Pidgeotto later. Um, you know, there's, there's ways to adapt the catch route accordingly, but obviously he had to get to level 10 to get to double kick. For Brock's mm -hmm. gym, there's just no way around that. Uh, yeah. So Saiyan it looks like is starting. Yeah, Saiyan and T Pat are about even, right? Yeah. And then Etiquette's yeah, a little far behind. Fewer catch. Um, yeah, Etiquette, I think we're really seeing the the effect of the breakouts um, mm -hmm. that he had, the breakout there he had on Pikachu. Um, and that extra 20 or 30 seconds that that took, you're, you're seeing the difference there. Uh, so we're seeing Brock's gym here. Uh, Pikachu, this is actually a, a... It's an easy fight for both versions, but this fight can be quite trivial in Pikachu because you use Oddish. Um, Oddish just one-shots the Geodude, no problem. Um, and this Onix can go down in one hit if it's got good special attack. We'll see if he, he does. And oh, what a great fight from Saiyan. Um, he's, he's moving right along here. Yeah, things are looking good on his Excellent, yeah. by the way. Yeah, <laughs> excellent Oddish. She'll have no trouble two-shotting the Bellsprout up in Mount Moon. Um, yeah, he's in, he's in great shape there. Whereas, uh, he uses Oddish. Eevee, as we've alluded to, uses Eevee for this fight. Um, so e that's Eevee needing to know double kick. Um, you just saw a two-turn fight from Saiyan on uh, on Pikachu. This is a five-turn fight on Eevee. So this is why you bring Oddish to the... <laughs> you bring Oddish <laughs> out for, uh, for Pikachu. Uh, just, you know, casually save three turns. Uh, yeah. So you see double kick. It'll two-shot... Um, each of the Geodude and the Onyx, and you're going to need to tail with the Onyx to get that two shot. So it's it's a slower fight. Both are pretty safe regardless, um, but it's it's just yeah, kind of uh, kind of annoying yeah. just sitting here and you know turn after turn after turn. <laughs> Based on the damage, though, Etikin's Eevee is pretty high on attack because it's doing way more than half for each set of double kicks. Yep. Um, 
So I would guess there's at least two or three attack AVs, which is nice to see that it's going to be competitive with uh, T Pat's EV as well. That's also yeah, it's turning got 27 into and 12 is what I just saw. Ooh, got 27 at 12. Love it. We like to see good starters here. Never want to see anyone get screwed over yes. with you know really bad EVs um, or Pikachu's. So it's nice to see that they're getting favorable attack at least. Yep. Uh, Saiyan now on Route 3. He, one of the nice things about Pikachu is you have two potential optionals here on Route on Route 3. You have Santru and you have Mankey. Um, whereas Eevee only gets one, and that's Ekans. So Saiyan's going to go ahead, catch this Santru, get a little extra experience, get another catch. Um, so, Ooh, and Ekans for T-Pat, again, too. Just, and, and it ends for e Pat. So again, two of the, our first two to hit Route Three both get a, a bonus Pokemon. Um, again, especially for T Pat, where he's already caught a Pidgey. You know, he, he's gonna want to try and get those bonuses. He's gonna want to try and get those extra Pokemon where he can get them, uh, mm -hmm. so that he's potentially either not having to catch Pidgeotto, um, i.e., he has other options other than just. Because Pidgeot is not the most fun catch. Uh, it tends to move around the screen a lot. It's uh, it's kind of tough. Um, so trying to get that catch count up for T-Pat will be something that I will certainly be watching as this run goes forward. And one thing that's nice for T-Pat is... He's already at 10. Yeah, like while both bugs aren't evolving, at least we're getting Butterfree because you do the deposits early in Mount Moon, which Saiyan's about to show us. And if you can deposit those bugs because they're fully evolved, it's really beneficial so they don't get all those extra levels. Because, I mean, personally, I predicted with my channel points that we're definitely going to see a Chansey. Um, and if you get a Chansey <laughs> where you have the bugs in your party and they gain, get up to a level 11, 12, 13, the real time sucks. So being able to level them up early with those optional catches so you can deposit them is really nice. So T Pat's going to be able to deposit and the Butterfree, Butterfree actually learns three moves at level 13. So that is even more of a time suck. Um, mm. So Peak is a little bit different uh, in how it treats Mount Moon, whereas Eevee menus right before this first trainer teaches it he teaches Eevee headbutt. Um, we're still in Oddish mode on on uh, Pika uh, because you've got a Bell Sprout and a Sandshrew here. Um, mm -hmm. So. Pikachu is just not equipped for either of those Pokemon. So he's going to go ahead and use um, Oddish to knock out both Bellsprout uh, and the Santru, and then he'll teach Headbutt to Pikachu, and then he'll put the lore on um, and head down into the basement. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, so EV runners are synced up pretty much, except T-Pat's three Pokemon ahead, so as we know, that's about a minute and a half ahead in time. Canonically, of course. Copy pasta that strongly disagrees <laughs> with you there, Yaziren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the EV runners here, there's basically a three-step process. You're gonna deposit the extra Pokemon, so that's Magikarp, Ekans, any fully evolved bugs. Then you learn Headbutt, which is going to carry Eevee for a long time in this run. You pop the lure, and then you go and hopefully one-shot this Bellsprout here. Yep, you, you can see Uzi the one-shot. Yeah, you can miss the one-shot if you're like level 11 with bad attack AVs, which is pretty frustrating, but it should be fine for both of these players. Yeah, and it's an advantage of Eevee, because in Pikachu, you just two-shot that Bellsprout every time. Uh, and you can even three shot it if you don't have if you don't have good attack or a special attack on your Oddish. So Saiyan went ahead and just menued there. Uh, we'll see what his basement looks like. Uh, so he's already got a Geodude. That's one of the three catches you want to see in here. And he's got Clefairy. That's two out of three. He would probably now just be looking for a and Paris. Paris. And there's Ooh, Paris. What perfect. a great set of spawns for Saiyan in the basement. Um, and. You remember, well, he doesn't get the first ball. Uh, that'll cut the EXP from this catch a little bit. But as we remember, he's already caught a, a supersized poke. Uh, his Oddish was supersized. Mm -hmm. So he's already pretty good on experience. 
Um, so he should be okay there despite missing with that first ball. Um, you can see Pikachu's already level 13 and some change there. Um, I saw a glowing Geodude on Etiquette. Chansey! Oh, there's a Chansey! Chansey for Etiquette. Look at Never this in doubt. set of spawn. Um, or T Pat has a Chansey. Did Etiquette have one too? Or we excuse just me. At excuse me. I yeah. meant T Pat. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so, T-Path, little yeah. baby runners, right? Yeah. Um, so T-Pad so actually went down in the basement, and it didn't look good. So it went back up and went back down, and then the the chance he popped up. So that he was rewarded for resetting that basement there. Yes. yes. So his EV is going to be what? quite leveled up. Um, so we need to pay attention to the other runners too. And I'm also watching for if anyone gets double Moonstone, because they're surely going to check for that. And that should be coming up here in the next few seconds. Uh, these runners before the run will set their clocks to about 1134 um, p.m. with the idea that as they're as they're sitting here in this room, that time will roll over to midnight, at which point you have, I think, roughly a 50 50 chance of having a, a second Moonstone respawn while you're there in the room. So you can just go ahead and pick that up. And that adds up being another bonus Pokemon as well. Um, so Etiquette getting a glowing Geodude here. Ooh, watch this catch on the Geodude. The timing is so and precise. That is, oh, it's so nice. It's, yeah, so that's one of the catches that um, a lot of the top tier runners will, will work on at length. Uh, so t Pat going for this Chansey here. Um, so Posits all the Pokemon first. Goes. And then Raspberry, yeah, he and I it's assume double great that's balls. A big part of it. Yep. Yep. Getting the Fingers deposits crossed. in. Uh, and they get to the excellent. Okay. No! Oh, no! Oh, in addition to yeah, cutting just time, not getting send. that first... Go and the champion's again. about to run. Okay, T-Pad does hit the excellent. Uh, if this Chansey pops out, it is going to run. So this is going to be very interesting. No! Oh, no, no. Oh, no. And it's... No! Uh, so oh. keep that with a very unfortunate break there. Not getting the catch. And, uh, you know, losing quite oh, a bit of time. And it gets with the Fable, Fable on his screen. Was it glowing, too? I think so. Uh, that was just um, a regular Clefable for him. Oh, uh, okay. It was in the corner. Couldn't quite tell, but Clefable also yeah. a nice uh, it's big not, old catch. It's not the same... <laughs> it's not the same EXP... Um, the same EXP bomb that Chansey is. Um, having actually caught one in a run yesterday, it's about 1,000 EXP if you hit it first ball excellent. Uh, whereas Chansey's more like 1,500, but it's still really helpful to have... Um, I would think he's going to go for it. I think the play would be to deposit pretty much everything and then go for it because this is a great point to clean out your party. And then, yep. yeah, you can just get it. I, he might deposit the Bell Sprout too um, because he has the Bulbasaur. So we'll see. Oh, you might be right. I, I, that might be I a I think point. Etiquette is I, a I... 1C enjoyer. Oh, no, keeping the Bell Sprout. There we go. Okay. No Clefable? Ah. Oh, no Clefable for. Ah. Uh... All right, and T Pad is uh, heading on out from uh, from the basement. That chancy breakout and flea was brutal. That chancy breakout is is going to haunt T Pad. I I fear in this run. Again, not just missing out on the EXP, which would have been a huge boon for him, uh, but also the time loss of having multiple breakouts and having it run and not having it count for uh, any bonus catches. Again, as and we, catching as we two talked about, caught... yeah. apparently. <laughs> and catching uh... two Clefairies, that won't, you know, if he needs the experience, you know. <laughs> That's a, sometimes that's what you have to do. Um, unfortunately, that second Clefairy, you don't get as much experience because you don't get that new Pokemon bonus. Mm -hmm. You can see at this point, um, Thane has actually opened up a fairly significant lead. Um, 
in terms of <laughs> in terms of these runners, you know, Saiyan is both farthest ahead in terms of plot progression and in number of catches. Um, okay, T-Pat getting the Geodude here. Um, but this is only level 7, and he's got a bad Geodude cycle. Yeah, yeah the you thing with the Geodude, and I, started to mention, and I started to mention it earlier, is Geodude tends to kind of levitate and move around a little bit, so the, the longer it takes you to catch it, um, the more likely it is to just kind of drift off center. Um, and that makes it a lot harder to get that excellent throw. It gets to a point where you're just like, okay, I'm going to take the great and, and get out of here. Um, so fortunately, T-Pad able to get the excellent. He's got level 15. He's good there, despite not getting that chancy experience. But I, I'm sure he's still he's still not particularly happy that he didn't get the chancy there. That would have been uh, that would have been a significant. You know, he'd probably be at about level 18 right now on this EV instead of level 15. Um, just yeah, for perspective. And in, so. and if in a non-race setting, that's one of those moments you just immediately go to the menu, close out the game, <laughs> and restart. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is really testing the the mental fortitude for T-Pat here. Like, I'm someone who gets tilted very easily. Um, but T-Pat's much better than I You and me both. Am, so. Yeah, you so hopefully he can he can recover and oh, and then walking into that geo dude, good... such bad luck. Uh, there are two certainties of this game: motion controls and getting blasted by wild encounters. And T-Pad just got the latter. Uh, so yeah, again, uh, yeah, you're exactly right, Josarian. Like you just have to, in a race like all this, you have to have a T-Pat and Etiquette are basically even if T-Pat's up one catch. So, like, this is yeah. not by any stretch of the imagination like, done. Um, even though right. Saiyan's no, just cruising Eddie. along, but um, the EV runners and, are very and, close. And, yeah, I mean, again, Saiyan has a very good Pikachu. Having plus special attack, um, especially in this fight, by the way, where Thundershock... You actually Thundershock both Pokemon, whereas in Eevee, you're headbutting them. Um, you have a better chance of knocking these Pokemon out, and that's exactly what Saiyan does by knocking out the coughing. You don't get exposed to potentially getting hit with poison gas or tackle or other things that can annoy you. Um, so, looks like a nice fight here. Doesn't quite get the one shot on the Ekans, but he bring he uses Oddish to go ahead and finish it off. So very nice. Uh, Saiyan gets to level 16. Um, interestingly enough, Saiyan's Pika is min attack. Um, so he did not get any awakening values in attack. That will cost him a little bit as this run goes on. Uh, specifically. Right up ahead here at Misty's Gym, instead of uh, being an automatic one-shot, which is usually the case when you're at 16, uh, level 16, uh, this will be a 10 and 16 range. So it'll be interesting to see if Saiyan actually brings out the second controller on Misty. He's going to go ahead and catch this glowing Mankey, uh, perhaps in the hope of getting a little extra experience, but also getting an additional Pokemon. And a nice easy catch from there, so that's great. Meanwhile, yep. Etiquette's out of Mount Moon. Nothing really showing up there, so just going to proceed on to learn a bunch of extra fancy moves for Eevee, so that way Eevee can handle almost anything that comes its way. Yeah, Yosarian, I know you're our, uh, you're our designated Eevee runner among <laughs> us. Tell us about these moves. I, they're, I mean, they're, the, the, yeah. the Pikachu move's all right, but... But these moves, wow. Yeah, so for Pika, you have to, you know, bring in a bunch of different Pokemon to uh, handle all the various weaknesses. But Eevee, it's nice. First, you can learn Bouncy Bubble, which we use to um, absorb a lot of hit points, which honestly helps a lot and it makes it so you don't have to heal as much throughout the run. Uh, and then we also learn Buzzy Buzz, which, um, you know, inflicts paralysis and uh, is going to be very effective in the upcoming Misty Gym. And then we learn Sizzly Slide, which, you know, rounds out the fact that, okay, now we're going to have Headbutt, which is very strong, and then three different types of moves there. So other than 
I believe, one fight, um, Eevee can pretty much handle everything itself because of this variety of moves that it gets. Um, so that's one of the big differences in running Pika versus Eevee, is that Pika has to rely on a lot of uh, friends <laughs> in the second controller slot yeah. versus yes. Eevee. A lot of fights you have an option to use second controller to make it a little bit safer, but uh, generally you can one see a lot of stuff because of the variety it has. So Pika does have kind of a response to that litany of moves that Eevee has, but it only has one. It's called Zippy Zap. It's a 50 power electric move, so it gets the same type of attack bonus, but it also always crits. So take that up from 50 to 75. Um, it's also a plus two priority move. So very few things in this run will get priority over Pikachu when it uses Zippy Zap. Namely, uh, Fake Out is a plus three priority move. So there's a couple Meowths that are kind of annoying that, that have it. Uh, but what's nice for Pikachu's perspective is you don't really think too, too much about speed. There's one or two Pokemon once you get into Rocket Basement that are really over leveled. Um, but other than that, it's, it's pretty smooth sailing from a speed perspective. Uh, but it does need some friends, as you mentioned, because it's an electric move. Ground types exist. Uh, so, <laughs> so interesting with Saiyan, I got a quick look at, um, at the, after that Mankey catch. I, I had mentioned that he was only at level 16, but that Mankey took him up high enough to where he's actually going to hit 17 on this Psyduck. Um, and that will no longer be arranged. This is just going to go ahead straight up one hit KO the uh, the Starmie. So uh, smooth sailing here for Saiyan. Yeah, and that was a good fight for Etika as well. Didn't one shot the Starmie, but uh, importantly, A did not get burnt, and B hit points are high enough that he will not need to heal before um, Nugget Bridge. So on EV, what you're looking for is uh, at least 13 hit points. If you're higher level, higher defense, you can fudge that a little bit, but. Um, gonna be at safe hit points and you know not burnt so can just roll right into nugget bridge versus t-pat let's see how this fight goes because you don't yeah, usually so one shot the starmie unless you have a really high uh special attack here for Eevee. yeah starmie has the move scald and it has a 30 percent chance to burn which feels a lot higher than 30 percent chance when you're on this fight uh, so getting through there without uh, without getting burned is is very very nice uh, meanwhile both etiquette and sane are going ahead and uh, on the rival two fights um, not really an overly difficult fight in either version and in fact uh, it's gonna kind of be the first of um, as you can see now t-pack gets burned yeah. on the uh, on the, the starmy uh, Fortunately, Eevee does purchase burn heals, which Pikachu does not do. Um, so he'll go, go ahead and burn, or he'll go ahead and heal that off. Um, but he has enough uh, HP to go ahead and head into the rival fight and be fine. Etiquette having a little bit of trouble here. Uh, he's down to six HP on his. Uh, but he, he'll be okay. It's just very low HP. Yeah, that's uh, kind of expected. It's the trade-off of not healing, but fortunately we're going to use Bouncy Bubble in a couple fights, and uh, he won't need to use any uh, yes. items or anything to heal, because it'll basically go uh, Headbutt, Bouncy Bubble, Headbutt, Headbutt again, Bouncy yeah, Bubble. These, super these fun, super fun sequence fight. of fights. Yeah. <laughs> these first three fights, it, it kind of makes it look like Nugget Bridge is just made for for eevee right like you have a venonat and you can just take a fire move to it you have a sire a side up you can take an electric move to it you have a sand true you can take a water move to it um mm. whereas pikachu like the first two you can handle it with the electric move and then you need a friend pikachu already up to level 18. Sheesh. yeah it's that is really nice. Um, so 
one of the real perks of that here is you run into a coughing at the end of this route. Spoiler alert, but there's one last trainer on Nugget Bridge after the supposedly five trainers. And that trainer is a Team Rocket member. That Team Ooh. Rocket member has two Pokemon. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that? Um, <laughs> his second Pokemon is a coughing. Um, Eevee does a pretty good job of taking care of that coughing. Pikachu less, though. Um, unless you're level 18, which Saiyan is. So he'll go ahead and... Um, and be able to, in all likelihood, one-shot that coughing with Zippy Zap, which is much, much less favorable range if you're at level 17 or lower. So if you're 17 or lower, do you just attack, use Zippy Zap twice, or do you, like, bring in a second controller uh, I, or something? I tend to like to headbutt. Um, mm. you, know, you, can get, you can get a situation where you've got, like, a 5 and 16 range. Um, you can go for it and see what you get, but I kind of like to headbutt there. See, like, can I get the flinch? Because um, it's a mm -hmm. 30% Good chance call. of flinch. Yeah. Kind of six of one, one half dozen of another at that point. Uh, so you bring in, you, you, you do the headbutt. It also saves a Zippy Zap PP, um, which you kind of start getting low on if you just use it indiscriminately. Uh, so a lot of times I'll like to just double headbutt that fight. That makes sense, yeah. And then, yeah, we're just moving along. This is the most fun part of the run. Narrowly beating oh, yes. out. But at the end where you push um, the boulder along in Victory Road about 50 times, but... Yeah. You know. Chat, is a quesadilla a sandwich? Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to go ahead and stir this pot a little bit. <laughs> I mean... There's the equivalent of bread on two sides of stuff in the middle. Toasted sandwich. Hmm. We got a nope and a yes. So, chat divided. I never thought about that one. You know, you think about like the ones of like a hot dog is that a sandwich or something. I haven't thought of quesadilla as a sandwich. Hey. hey. We're bringing the, uh, you know, forget your, forget your morning coffee, which uh, uh, we may or may not have heard one of the runners pre-race talking about he did not have his morning coffee. We, we won't disclose which one, because uh, uh, that may affect some, some pickums here in the future. Uh, but uh, we're, we're bringing some, some nice early morning uh it's early Ooh, morning thinking. Glowing Meowth, but it's so far glowing away. Glowing Meowth, Predicate, but it's really skips. far Oh, yeah, yeah I wouldn't go for that it. either. It's so far away on the left. If it was on the right, it's a pretty easy choice. But also, it's not lured, so the glowing doesn't really help too much. Um, Another quick difference to note here on uh, between uh, between versions, and we've got Venonat showing up on Saiyan's screen, which he's not going to go for either. Same thing. Uh, so if you Venonat's look on bait, Saiyan's screen right I never now. Um, if you look on Saiyan's screen, he's actually going to pick up this ether over here. Um, that ether is conveniently used in about two hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, um, but one of the ideas behind picking that up and the way the, the items in this game work is we want to create what we call God Menu. So we want to be able to easily get access to our X attack and X special attacks um, and be able to do so quickly and repeatedly. So having that item there allows us to have enough items in our inventory to quickly get to, um, to qu quickly get to those X attacks with just either a flick of the control up or a flick of the control to the left. Um, so that's and D Pat runs into yet another pitch. <laughs> and T-Pat saying zero in special attack, which is undesirable. You definitely want at least like yes. one in special attack AV. So this might be part of the effect of what we were talking about earlier with T-Pat's catch route, having already caught Pidgey. Um, he's going to go ahead and catch this Meowth. He's going to go a little bit out of the way to do so. 
uh, just again trying to get those bonuses, trying to get um, you know those backups in case you know you don't want to have to catch up Pidgeotto or a Tentacool. Uh, oh, and again. Oh, I thought he was ditching Bill. <laughs> I was a little uh, off on what I was looking at. Oh, dang. Maybe next time. <laughs> uh, I think we'll see some ditches of Bill later. I got extra hype for something that wasn't happening. I thought Etiquette was going for that knock skip there for a second, but uh, alas, no. Um, knock skip is a highly technical trainer skip that saves you two seconds but risks it risks an additional fight so you won't see a lot is that of the one where you go kind of north um in that weaving around the bushes that's right yeah um i know etchy regularly goes for that i i i avoid that like the plague i mean i have enough trouble with um our friend in Victory Road who shares the name with my Amazon-enabled devices um, that I won't <laughs> say right now, otherwise my house is going to start blowing up on me. Um, <laughs> Why so would they do that to that us, the Pokemon developers? Didn't they know? Uh, <laughs> they, they should have known that Amazon would come, come up in the future and be like, hey, we're going to make this name, uh, you know, Make your Amazon devices totally dependent upon saying this name. <laughs> oh, that's inconsiderate of them. It's a really fun fact that has nothing to do with this run. I've noticed the... I actually saw something the other day. The birth rate of that name, which starts with an A, has a Lex in the middle, and ends with an A, uh, has declined substantially since Amazon Ooh. had that so, fun little uh, useless trivia fact from, from Poketax today. Yeah, I can see the logic in that, though. Don't want to confuse your home device with your kids. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so here the, the trainers are going to run through the underground, pick up a couple items, and then we'll have our next fun little catch section where a lot of variants can be introduced into how the runners... Uh, runs go before hopping on the SSN because sometimes the it really just gives you like one Pokemon you need and you're just like all right I'm gonna go um, and sometimes you can be there catching four or five different Pokemon um, depending on yeah. what shows up so it's gonna be pretty interesting. Etiquette picking up An the Eevee. big pearl. Hmm. Ooh, etiquette pick and the nugget. So going for extra for money. money. Hmm. Interesting. We'll see how that affects his shop in Vermilion, uh, if it does at all. Uh, the one th so, Etiquette and T-Pat, conceivably, if they didn't see anything that they wanted to see on um, on, on Route 6, could just keep on going. Like, okay, there's nothing here. I'm just seeing a bunch of Pidgeys or a Psydux or whatever. Um, that is not true for Saiyan he really wants to see Growlithe, uh, because Growlithe we're going to go ahead and use both on the SSN rival fight, as well as on the Route 9 fights. Um, plus, we end up evolving it to Arcanine later and using it as a ride Pokemon. Um, so, really, really critical poke as Etiquette is getting trolled by this glowing Rattata. Um, yeah, and normally you would catch Rattata later, but... Um, he needs the experience for the boat because if you're too low level with your EV, then what's going to happen is uh, the rival's Pokemon is just going to air slash and one hit KO uh, your Bell Sprout, which is going to take plenty of extra time away from you. Uh, so I believe this is just going to catch solely based on experience. Oh, and it evolves a Bulbasaur, um, which will be which will be good for the catch count as well. Uh notable is both of both etiquette and t-pad have minus speed so even at level 19 normally at level 19 yeah. zero av and ev you have your speed tied with that pidgeotto so you're just like please hit this please hit this please hit this uh but they're gonna both be outsped so they might both see that that air slash uh into their bell sprout that you were just talking about so it'll be interesting to see by the way saiyan did catch his growlith um he's gonna go ahead and catch this pidgey as well a little extra experience 
getting that catch knocked out. Now, he, unlike T-Pat, will be able to evolve that Pidgeotto straight away. So he'll forego Pidgeot. Um, because it's just a one-level uh, evolution from Pidgeon to Pidgeotto. Um, but, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll pass on Pidgeot. So it's a, it's a pretty good catch here. Yeah. Ooh, and saying going for the Psyduck, too. I assume it's because it's glowing. Well. Yeah, for the experience. Catch that. count's looking good. Um, you know, catch count's looking good all around. Glowing Psyduck, decent experience for right now. It's going to rule out Golduck later, but honestly, that's fine. You don't always want to be on Route 17 hoping for... Oh, another chance to for T-Pat. T-Pat. Second time's a charm. It's glowing. Hits. Hits. It's glowing. It hits. It misses the vermilion skip. I'm glad oh, I'm no. not the only one who does that. All oh, right, so T-Pat with a chance for revenge on this Come fancy. On. Yes! And he gets it! Oh. All right. Okay. This is going to give about a billion and a half experience. That is, that, that is going to be one beefy meow. Um, so up to level 22, that speed <laughs> issue we were talking about for um, for SSN Pidgeotto is not going to be an issue. Um, it will only be an issue for Etiquette now. Yeah. Yeah, that EV is looking good, and that's going to yeah, that, most likely that enable to double gym, edge man. early too. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that EV went to the gym. It, it did some uh, it did some bench presses, some bicep curls. It is ready to go. That's the highest level Meowth I've ever seen in this game, I think. <laughs> I, I don't even know what level it evolves. You know, like, if it's... And Jack can probably help us out with that. Um, but uh, he kind of asked the question, like, like, it's already... It's, like, so far okay, away. Okay, 28. <laughs> okay. There's no chance yeah, of keeping say, that. <laughs> if it was, like, level 22, you'd be like... You know, it's five more levels, maybe. Just keep it here. Let it be Persian. Um, but if it's that far away, no. You, Ooh, you okay. So Etiquette's buying a lot of extra guard specs, which is why he went for the extra money there. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's the, the logic there. We'll see how he uses them later on in the run. It's going to be interesting. But that's yep. why I picked up the big by pearl, the presumably, to get the money to buy those. Already getting Weeping Bell, too. That's already done. Yeah, so T Pat stuck in level up and evolution hell for a few minutes before uh, eventually going to buy and get on SSN where Sane and Etiquette are. No, and actually, in terms of progression, um... Everybody, well, with the exception of T Pat, they're, they're all pretty close here. So, um, T Pat is going to get the Vermilion skip here. He does. Okay, so Rival 3, uh, which Sane is coming up on. Uh, from a Pikachu perspective, this is. Um, usually, this is Pikachu and Growlithe. Uh, you go ahead and. Use your Growlithe supplement, um, and it'll use Helping Hand on uh, the Eevee. It'll use Flamethrower on the the uh, the Oddish, which it's it's needed because Pikachu again has trouble with Grass types. Uh, and it'll use an X Attack here uh, just to buff up Pikachu stats. So it's actually a pretty nice three turn. Return fight here. Etiquette going hmm. one C. Yeah, um, this is interesting. I have actually, I've been hundreds of runs. I've never actually done this before, but yeah, this is the strat here because the speed is so low to not get the Bell Sprout surely one hit KO'd um, using yeah. the guard spec here and just one Cing it with Eevee. Uh, very, very interesting strategy here, which presumably is either safer or saves more time. Maybe a little bit of both, but. Um, etiquette, very experienced runner who definitely knows what he's doing. So, being able to adapt yeah, on the fly and figure this stuff out is pretty great. 
And that's one of the great things about this game, right? Like, it's not the same every time. And these top-level runners, you know, I know, Yosarian, you and I are both, even though we're both newer runners, we're both, we're both pretty good. Uh, yeah. But these guys are just, these are, this is a different level uh, of being able to uh, adapt to different circumstances. They, these guys have seen some stuff uh, uh, over oh, the yeah. course of their career. Uh, um, I'm kind of hoping I'm not it, not competing head to head with these guys directly, but I'm sure it'll happen <laughs> at some point. <laughs> yeah, but... I, I faced Randall in my my first round, and it's I was like, yeah, I'm just going for second. This that's fine. Everything's fine. Um, again, a runner in that that same sort of tier and caliber of these runners, um, and it's you know it is fun to watch runners like this who can it can take even the most adverse circumstances and say, all right, we're going to find a way to get through this. Mm -hmm. uh, so nice job from Etiquette there, being able to take a, take what, what would have been a very adverse fight, uh, being minus speed and, and making the best of it. Mm -hmm. I love seeing Weeping Bell in this fight with yes. uh, for T Pat. Yes. <laughs> yes, I was going to say more conventional rival three fight for Eevee, other than, oh, look, that's a Weeping Bell. <laughs> um, that is, uh, you almost never see that. It's almost always just Oddish. <laughs> or, excuse me, Bellsprout. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> it's already level 21, so there you go. So I wonder if T-Pat's going to deposit them all and go 1C for the upcoming catches. Probably would be my guess, because then you can catch, um, you know, something like uh, a Spiro or Rattata. Um, I, f I forget. I think you already caught. You already caught Pidgey. Um, I can't see their trackers, but but either way, there are 1C catchable Pokemon on Route 10 coming up, so he'll probably clean out his whole party um, in the upcoming menu. Would be my guess. No reason to keep Weeping Bell, I would say. So it's going to be interesting no. to see how those 1C catches go. Yeah, you probably, in that circumstance, um, probably look for, like, a Rattata or something like that that's relatively yeah. easy to catch. And you, you catch that first, and you just go from there. Mm -hmm. So I so think Etik is probably hoping saying, for... Oh, go ahead. Uh, Saiyan is, uh, did indeed get the, the uh, Vermilion skip. I mean, we we actually kind of expect these these trainers to be getting um, various skips um, throughout the run. It was very surprising to see Etiquette not get that Vermilion skip. Um, but Saiyan went ahead and got it, and he will now be starting up to Route 9 as well. And we'll see a little bit of the differences here. Um, between Route Nines, between the versions, again, as we've talked about, this is where Pika needs some help from his friends, um, and we'll start to see that here with with uh, with Growlithe. Yeah, let's see how this this fight goes against Alicia. Um, for Eevee, it's a little more straightforward. You just use the guard spec that way. Um, the tail whip doesn't really affect you, and then you just power through it, but clearly <laughs> that's not going to work with just Pikachu here. Yeah, that, that EV is a jerk. It's got tail whip, it's got growl, it's got band attack, um, so you don't want that thing to use any of those attacks because <laughs> they're, they're, they're a pain. Pikachu, you X attack with the, the second controller and double kick it. Um, for saying at level 21, that is not a range. Uh, if you're at level 19, which is actually quite common, and you don't have attack AVs, that does become a range. Um, so that EV can can go ahead and actually start getting some attacks off and, it, and go a little south uh, if you don't hit that. Also, my little favorite part of, uh, of Pika here on the right, you're running with the, running with the second controller down Route 9. <laughs> Uh, because you you once again 2C uh, here on this fight because this guy's got a Sandru. Uh, Sandru, once again, no good for Eevee, so you can go ahead, take out Growlithe, 
who conveniently at level 17 has flamethrower, which is one of the strongest fire type moves. Sure, Ooh. that's great, awesome. And you just go ahead and one shot this Andrew. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing's one of the reasons I haven't undertaken Pika yet is because I'm so bad at managing both controllers just moving around the map, which you have to do a lot in Pika. I just my brain can't function moving the two characters at once. <laughs> so does, the fact that they do it practice. so effectively is impressive. Yeah, it does take some practice, but uh, uh, you know, I think you and I have shown again, I, I, underscoring our experience for those who may be newer to this game. Uh, etiquette just getting by the the spinner there uh, on Route Ten, uh, but just going for those who are newer to this game, like we've shown that new runners can be very effective um, mm -hmm. in, uh, as saying takes a more conservative path on that spinner, um, in, in either game, because I'm a, I'm a Pikachu runner, you're an Eevee runner, we both have 303 PBs, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, like <laughs> and I just started running it. like seven months ago or something, like Right. That's with some and, time off, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and similar with me. So, um, and in my case, I've never run a video game in my life. So, <laughs> it's just it's such a such a fun game to be a part of, such a fun community to be a part of. And yeah, you can get pretty good at this run pretty quickly. Um, I'm not saying either of us are any of these three runners, but uh, <laughs> fun to see just you know, the community continuing to expand and grow and, and no. being part of that too. Uh, I wasn't knowing to what you said, but I was knowing to this crabby trolling etiquette jumping out of the way. Yeah, and After he you only a very got nice one great call on that. Oh. Yep, and you can see, you can see, uh, yeah, this, and this is not a 100% catch either, uh, even with the two great balls. Oh my and you gosh. And broke out again. Um, These I are just frustration throws here. This is, yeah, <laughs> once again, this is not... Krabby is actually not the easiest catch here. Um, you really want to try and get uh, at least a grade on it. Um, but he goes ahead and gets it. Uh, well, that one's done. Zan Man does not, not have a good very Pokemon good. there. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got repel. a bunch of... He got a Spiro, a Firo. You want to get as many diversified spawns as you can here. Um, and Nidoran or Pika is far and away the most important. You want Nidoran male if you can get it, but Nidoran female will work too. Um, so, again, the ongoing theme of... of Pika is that it's very much Nita or uh, Pika and friends and <laughs> one of your very good friends throughout the rocket segment uh, is is Nito Kang um, and you can see actually Saiyan did catch a, a Nidoran male so he's got that now I assume he'll go ahead and use his moonstone and evolve that into Nita King uh, but there are backups where you use Nidoran female that would like going for the glowing radicate. Mm -hmm. This is a good chunk of experience. He gets the catch. We might see a yes. super over level Eevee. Did not use the raspberry, I don't think. Nailed but he it, still though. catches it. Yeah, it's not guaranteed without a raspberry, but I mean, it's. Yeah. We're going for speed here. <laughs> We've got to take yeah. some chances. A uh, G-Pad, I happen to know likes to use um so usually uh nita king strats are a pikachu creation right like mm -hmm. again just out of pure necessity but t pat does like to use nita king strats on eevee as well um in large part to take care of a, a meddling clefairy that shows up later on uh, which has metronome on it. So, uh, having that Nita King available to him will uh, will reduce variability caused by that. Mm -hmm. And Etiquette's just going to go through about three evolutions here. Um, but that's really going to help the catch count there going into Rock Tunnel. Um, 
in the meantime, T-Pat. Yeah, I think they're just trying to buff up on their catches and their levels, especially with the minus speed EV. Um, yeah. So after the, the catches we just saw, Rock Tunnel is going to be another big catch section where things can go really well or really poorly, depending on which Pokemon show up. So it's going to be fun to see how soon a Rhyhorn does or doesn't show up for them. Yeah. What is T-Pat looking for Correct me here? If I... Looking for maybe a Krabby or something? I don't know. Was was he looking for a cat? He's, he's gonna catch the rat. Despite didn't he already catch a rat caught. though, like in he Route caught, Two, got, or was that etiquette? He caught Pidgey back on Route Two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you're right, you're right, you're right. But, but he yeah. did catch, he did catch that glowing rat earlier. So he's just gonna deposit yeah. this rat. Right, so Saiyan's already into Rock Tunnel. Uh, by the way, follow up from earlier, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, with minus speed, and I think this may be why we're seeing Etiquette and T-Pat buff up their level, uh, the Kangaskhan can actually outspeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Kangaskhan can be a, an issue. Um, and there are a couple more Pokemon later too, but definitely here um, in the upcoming Rock Tunnel, Kangaskhan, which is one of the more annoying fights for Eevee. Uh, can definitely be a problem if your speed's low. Yeah, it's All right, so etiquette, Nidoking. And you can see Pat did get that Krabby, so he his, his patience was rewarded. Um... Etiquette getting into some really cooked up advanced strategies here. Just catching everything yeah, he, and skipping the actual evolutions. And it's a lot of times it is and... kind of a break even. Like, because the the animation for evolutions and all that stuff, if you can catch a Pokemon on the first cycle, it's not too much of a time difference. Um, so that's why we would see them catching, like, Nidorina or something like that, um, versus just waiting for the Nidoran female to evolve. Yeah, and the extra experience, uh, any, of course, is important. Any went ahead and used, uh, used a Moonstone to evolve Oh my that, god, they're, like, perfectly uh, synced really in the Eevees. Yeah, they are. They are. <laughs> uh, this fight for Eevee is just so super straightforward. Just going to uh, headbutt twice. The issue is what moves the Radicate uses will affect whether you need to heal um, pretty much right away or if you can delay it. So you actually see the Radicate's pretty nice here to them. Oh. Yeah, I spoke too soon. Saying, but you don't want to, you don't want to see that Super Fang, especially turn one, because that just that does half your health right there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah Pika, yeah. it's it's similar, um, except you outspeed it because Pika is silly fast. Um, you could actually headbutt it if you are high enough attack. You could headbutt it, try and get it to flinch, and then come back with a double kick to KO it. Um, so a little smoother fight for Pika than um, than for Eevee, but again, you can get through it. Uh, so we're seeing we're seeing Saiyan getting that Rhyhorn into his party. Um, yeah, really early Rhyhorn catch is really oh. nice. Yes, because you can ride it around couple, couple faster. Of, you get around faster and. You have a much better chance of it leveling up before um, Rocket Basement when you use it on J and J two. So mm -hmm. that, so you, spoiler alert, you use Drill Run uh, to take out uh, the Arbok and Weezing that, that Jesse and James have. It's much more likely to knock out the Arbok and Weezing if you're level twenty five than if you're level twenty four. So, really nice not just to have that for movement, but also to get those extra levels onto it. Um, Etiquette, once again, only gets one Great Ball onto this Zubat. Let's see if it stays down. It does. You get less experience for it as a result, but it stayed down. Pat not hitting the range uh, on this Slowpoke. That's that's pretty common for Eevee. Uh, Pikachu mm -hmm. just one-shots it, and, and LOL. Um, 
Yeah, it's pretty unusual to one-shot that slow poke um, with Eevee, unfortunately. Dan's getting all the catches. I mean, yeah, it feels like we're talking about the EV routing. runners more, but like, Dan's just cruising along, having just like a great run. Like nothing's gone wrong. Yeah, everything showed up. Everything's a good level. <laughs> like no real big surprises. It, it, I, I would go so far just... as to say this is a really good run from Zan. Um, you know, again, he's getting the catches he needs to get. Um, he's moving quickly. Um, there's your Graveler. Graveler, you want to catch here? By the way, T-Pat into the Kangaskhan fight. Um, and doing exactly what Ugh. he should be doing there, which is burn it. Oh my god, what is that? Four or five punches? Brutal. Dear Diary, today I got hit by five comet punches. <laughs> this takes a ton of time. You get hit because you, the, the Kangaskhan's burnt. It takes like two damage per punch, but you're just sitting there like, please stop punching me. <laughs> so these guys are just, again, continuing through. Saiyan actually turning off the lure. He's got enough catches. Um, and he's like, yep, I'm good. So he's just going to yeah. cruise right on through here now. Fortunately, Etiquette finds the Rhyhorn, which is great. Uh, clearly, T Pat T -Pat doesn't still... have one yet. Cause... <laughs> yeah, T Pat's still, uh, you know, he, he's getting his legs nice and buff. Um, he is, uh, you know, he's getting those that cardiovascular workout. Ooh! That was so close. T Pat almost gets hit by the spinner there. Um, but then probably finds a grappler. All is well. <laughs> Yeah, so for the spinners, while they're actually turning, they won't catch you. They have to, like, stop and have their vision. So as long as you get past them while they're still turning, you're fine. That was a pretty close one there. But I'm sure T-Pad yeah, actually I, knew, it, knew it would be fine, you know, with that experience. Yeah, so, you know, it's... And, and but again, to us, it looks very close. <laughs> to us, like, I, I, I don't know about you, but I certainly would not have taken that pass. Uh... But for runners like these, again, they they are so familiar with the spinner passes and the cycles um, that they just know that they can get. And T-Pat finally getting his uh, his right horn, so he's he can uh, he can take a little bit of a breather, uh, <laughs> knowing that he's got that. Yeah, no Rhyhornless walk of shames outside of Rock Tunnel this yeah. time. Yeah, and it's especially important for our EV runners here. Um, that they get that they go ahead and get the Rhyhorn. Um, Pikachu does have a backup, which is Arcanine. Normally, you evolve Arcanine pretty much when you deposit Pikachu after Pokemon Power. But you can bump that up to as soon as you get the Fire Stone. Uh, there's a little patch of grass. Well, I think it's. I'm going to get the route number wrong because I always do. I think it's Route 8, uh, where there's a Fire Stone. So you can just go ahead and evolve mm, that yeah, into yeah. Arcanine, and you, you dash around pretty quick. Uh, but Eevee does not have that backup, so it's really critical that that Eevee go ahead and get that uh, get that Rhyhorn. And fortunately for all of our runners, they did. Yeah. And Eevee can sometimes go in that patch of grass for the Firestone if you really want, um, but that's pretty much committing to evolving the Vulpix later. Um, but it is also a nice little area to check, like let's say you didn't get a Jigglypuff um, or something along those lines. That's that little extra space where maybe you see it before you cut the bush and run in. Um, I had to get running into a Geodude accidentally. He was kind of sandwiched there between the Pokemon, yeah. didn't have much choice. Sometimes it's better to just run into one and get it over with, especially in these narrow corridors, than to try to wait and then still have to run into it anyway. <laughs> And especially a Pokemon that you've already seen before. Uh, so if you notice, th there's a little difference in the animation. See it on t -Pat's screen now. You saw Machop do a little flex there because he hasn't caught Machop yet. Uh, whereas if he had caught a Machop, you would see it just kind of appears on screen. And if you wanted to run away from it, you could do so pretty quickly. The difference is, between, is uh, it takes you about four seconds to run from a Pokemon that 
you already see, whereas it takes more like 10 seconds if you haven't, or already caught, excuse me, uh, whereas it takes more like 10 seconds if you haven't caught it. So if you're in that situation where you're just boxed in, you're like, okay, I've already seen this Pokemon. Uh, let's say he's like boxed in between a Geodude and a Kangaskhan, right? Like Kangaskhan, <laughs> it don't catch it here. Shout out to our <laughs> AOP runners. Um, so you would not want to run into the Kangaskhan because it would just do its little animation and it takes five or six seconds to do that. So uh, just, again, little optimizations for when things inevitably go wrong. Saiyan out of Rock Tunnel in 114 with 31 catches. That is fast. That is just straight up fast. Uh, yeah, that is uh, incredible pace. Like in my PB, I'm out of Rock Tunnel in 117 with 33 catches. So just on another level here. And just even this run in the race, Saiyan is just cruising yeah, I, along. It has been, um, I mean, Gazarian, I think as an EV runner, you're just like, what is this? This looks easy. I, you know, you could almost be converted to the, the Pika cause uh, yeah, it's just watching that easy. a run like this. <laughs> it's, 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 it's always this easy, I swear. Uh, no, it's not. Um, yeah. Always I, have a Growlithe show just, up, you know, always have an I mean, Oddish. In addition to having that. Yeah. Oh, by the way, T Pat now has double edge uh, because he's hit level 28. Um, and you saw it there on that Kadabra. Uh, so, for that fight in particular, you know, not having to worry about setup, which is really nice because there's a Bullpix that's the first Pokemon there that knows Flamethrower and has an unsightly habit of burning. Uh, so, using double edge will we'll pick. Pat back up some time here. Yeah, double edge is nice. It, you do have to manage your uh, hit points and healing a little bit. Not particularly difficult, but it can make you slip up every now and then. But surely using double edge and just one shotting stuff is much faster than having to, for example, X special attack headbutt these Pokemon. So getting level 28 on EV sooner rather than later is pretty desirable, especially getting it by the end of Rock Tunnel doesn't happen often, but that glowing chancy and all that extra experience is really, really helping out here. Um, usually you might get it um, after Rock Tunnel at one of the points and just barely get 28 in time, but getting it in Rock Tunnel is a good signal that your EV is very strong. And we just caught the back end of Saiyan knocking out Rival 4. Um... That's it's a relatively straightforward fight. Again, you're using your your new pal Nita King. Um, Pikachu can handle Pidgeotto, obviously being an Electric type against a Flying type. Um, Gloom and Jolteon are a little bit more problems. Um, so you use Nita King and Poison Jab both of those Pokemon, and they just go down in one hit. Zarian will be back with us here in a second, so you'll get a little bit of just me. I apologize to everyone in in, uh, in chat in advance for that. So now we're hitting rival four for all for all three runners. Um, seeing it for etiquette, etiquette does get the the one shot there on the, the, the Pidgeotto with his headbutt. Starting up here for T Pat as well. It's a little bit low on HP, but it's just fine. He goes ahead and knocks out the Raichu. T Pat with the more conventional uh, 2C approach on this fight um, using Rhyhorn, whereas uh, Pikachu uses the Nita King. Um, so, what Eevee will do is it'll go ahead. Um, go ahead and with this Raichu you'll actually kind of tag team you can double edge or headbutt with the uh, with the EV you can actually also drill run here um, on this on this Raichu if you didn't have double edge though so you actually kind of make it a team effort unfortunately T-Pat's EV goes down 
Um, oh, so that's no. going to be a little bit of an issue uh, because he's going to have Gloom coming out here. My guess is he's going to have to go ahead and revive that Eevee. And then just bring it back out. Because Rhyhorn does not really have anything that can take that out with. Rhyhorn might also go down here. Um, Oof, this is... So this, this is, is a, a little bit rough, situation. what we're seeing here. And then Saiyan going for the Abra without an Anab, missing the first yeah. throw, but hopefully this one stays in. It's not lured, so it's got to be a pretty high catch rate. Yeah, Yeah, the rich and get richer nice, here. Nice catch there. <laughs> A pretty rough fight, and this actually is iron is exactly what you were talking about uh, with having to manage your HP with double edge, um, and it unfortunately came back to, to bite T Pat there a little bit. Um, so a little bit of a rough fight there, a um, little bit of a rough fight for Saint catching a Rattata here. Did he not get a Rattata yeah, I think earlier? Uh, did you get to so, catch Eradicate or just nothing? I can't see their trackers. I think you, let, let me pull up the tracker real quick. Yeah, Saiyan did not catch either one. Uh, Rat, Ratata on Route 10 is something I tend to not wait around for. Uh, because you can catch it in so many other places. You can catch it there. You can catch it on Route 7. You can catch it on Route 17. You can catch it mm -hmm. in Mansion. Uh, so if you're like, hmm, I still haven't gotten this Radita yet. Can I leave? The answer is probably yes, you can. Uh, and that just, so you're just not sitting around waiting for another spawn. Yeah, I mean, you can even get them in the mansion right like the last possible yep. second um yep yeah. rattata eradicate yeah. definitely pop up there are saiyan and etiquette the, yeah they're i mean it saiyan's a few pokemon the, ahead but they're, they're yeah. both heading to uh they're both heading to sell it on now um they will both go ahead and by the way nice nine tails on etiquette's screen um, they will both go ahead and, and do a synchronize feature. Um, and you can see it here on Saiyan screen. Uh, so they'll synchronize, and this is really important because we're gonna spoiler alert catch a Starmie later. And in order to, to have our optimal Starmie, we want it to have plus special attack and minus attack, so we want it to be modest. So we essentially pay off this uh, pay off this woman here, who will will do that for us, and will make every Pokemon that we run into modest nature. So, um, so pretty magical very powers nice to have. Has. Yeah, I, I I wish I could do that. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So it's the sort of thing that's very important. Um, you don't want to skip it. <laughs> because otherwise you are putting your, the fate of your Starmie up to chance. That would be an interesting tech. Sometimes, you know, in games, the world record gets so optimized, you have to take insane risks. I long for the day where... I was going to say... To push the time down, you don't synchronize and you just hope it's modest. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't imagine there would ever be a circumstance where the record that's that good, but... Uh, you know, you're like, oh, a minute behind. No, oh, let's let's uh, let's save the ten thousand pokey dollars and save the time <laughs> not talking to Madam Celadon. Let's shout outs to Madam yeah. Celadon for the extremely original name. Uh, I guess she really didn't have much of a choice as to where to live. Like, <laughs> huh, I, my name is Madam Celadon. I live in Pewter City. Okay, that's cool. So, so uh, is Madam her first name and Celadon's her last I, name, I, or do you think she's I, just I, named Celadon with one name and then they call her Madam? I mean, these are see, these are the questions that get the get the mind flowing on a nice Sunday morning like this, right? Like, I mean, we, we've got is quesadilla sandwich. We've got what is Madam <laughs> Celadon's real name? Um, anyway, 
going back to the substance of the run a little bit, uh, so this Hypno is actually kind of a fun little tech in Pika. You end up 2Cing it, um, and you, you 2 see it, I've seen in, in Eevee as well, uh, but you can actually, if your attack is good enough on either the Nidoking or the Pikachu, you can actually one-shot by uh, using X items uh, on one or the other. Um, I actually had a run where uh, it didn't quite knock out the Hypno, but you used Poison Jab with Nidoking, and it went ahead and poisoned. And then the poison <laughs> damage ticked down and, and took, the, uh, took out the Hypno, so it saved a nice double turn. Yeah, the Hypno one's interesting, because with, uh, with one... If you have Double Edge with Eevee, then you just kill it on turn one. But if you don't, as we saw with Etiquette, it can be a little trickier. Um, this Raticate yeah. fight's also an interesting one with Double Edge, too. Um, or, sorry, not Double Edge. With Attack, too. Um, if you're not level 28 on Eevee. Because then you have to think, okay, do I 2C it? Do I just roll with it and try to headbutt it to death? Um, so there's a lot of choices here for EV runners on whether they want to 2C or 1C stuff. And also a lot a of times it will fight. depend on double edge or not. Oh, scary it's a fight. Scary fight because that Braticate has it has bite, it has hyper fang, it will start flinching you. It EV is faster than you. Um, so yeah, very scary fight. Um, Little less yeah, I definitely Pika. lost runs there, like with the Raticate killing me. Yeah, uh, it can definitely a little happen. less scary in Pika, but but you know, even then you can still get flinched, um, and it ends up being two double turns instead of one double turn. So, um, interesting. That's saying so. Normally the tech. For this fight, and okay, he's going ahead and using X special attack here. Usually the play here is to one see this and use Pika's Thunderbolt twice. He went ahead, this is a little extra safety because he doesn't want to get poisoned. Um, he just brought out the second controller and went ahead, just straight up knocked out the, the Grimer without it getting an attack off. Because that thing also does no minimize. Um, fortunately, etiquette. Did not, who did not hit one hit there did not see minimize um, mm -hmm. also no sludge so it can poison you yeah it's a, a number of kind of troll fights here um, I could just suck up a bunch of time if you're not careful and T-Pat's going to 1C this so this is one of the fights where the speed actually comes into play um, for EV now again the EVs actually I don't know if I'd say over leveled at this point it's just a good level um, but with minus speed you can get outsped by the Voltorb um, which can be problematic so you double edge the Rattata no big deal um, but then the Voltorb has 65 speed um, but at level 30 I think the EV is going to be fine um, we'll see but this could have... Oh, no, there you go. But that was probably a pretty terrible attack by the Voltorb. So, lucked out. Um, uh, but this can make your mention. HP okay. management ahead. tricky because you want to be at at least about 30 hit points when you get up to the Grimer that we just saw. So, for example, if the yep. Voltorb is really fast and you use two double edges, you might have to heal an extra time for this fight. But fortunately, T-Pat, the Voltorb was nice to him. Yeah, you're just throughout this section, and this is really a section where, for newer runners, there's a lot of potential room for for growth and improvement, uh, because there's just so many ways to do it, and depending on um, the circumstances, how you can optimally do this. Um, so, if there's a section where you're like, oh, I need to get better at this run, I want to get better at this run, and I'm like, where can I shave some time off? Think about this one. Because this is a section where you're responding to a bunch of different uh, situations. And you're like, okay, what's the best response if this happens? What's the best response if this happens? Uh, so really good section to kind of start working on to make up time. By the way, um, we're seeing on TPAT's screen, um, because we have to do it and there are bingo cards involved, 
Um, T-Pat standing on a rolling chair. Uh, this is not law offices of Pokey Tax Attorney approved conduct. Standing on a rolling <laughs> chair is bad. Um, so yeah, don't don't do that. But yeah, you may now uh, take that square off of your uh, off of your uh, bingo card. Um, so th th this is now the J and J fight I was actually talking about earlier with Rhyhorn using Drill Run on the Arbok, and it does get the Arbok. That is a range. Um, so that's really nice to get here. We're actually going to see the attack on this Rhyhorn, which is good enough to go ahead and try to take out this Weezing. Um, yeah, and I'm watching Inverse's yeah. Etiquette does not go with that strat because the Rhyhorn's only level 24. So the drill run okay. would be very and questionable <laughs> yeah. at that point. That's again, that's, it's what we were talking about earlier wanting to have that Rhyhorn as early as you can in, in uh, Rock Tunnel. Uh, unfortunately, Saiyan did not get the rage on on that Weezing. Um, so, but it's still a pretty... I'm not going to call it a safe three-turn fight, but it was a relatively straightforward three-turn fight, um, and he's ready to move on to the next one. So I see T-Pat and Etiquette taking different, like, spinner routes than I do that is specified in the notes. I wonder if this is, like, a preference thing or if it's actually, like, a second faster or something to go that way. Because they both they, went a different are... way than is, I would say, quote, standard to go. Yeah, there are two spinner routes. There are two routes through there, and I believe there are, and again, Shaq can correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, there are two paths. Both of them, I believe, take the exact same amount of time. Um, it's just Phew, okay. I don't have me, to sweat it then next run. <laughs> right? No, you don't, <laughs> don't have to have be to like, oh, it. I gotta, I gotta learn this new. No, it's, it's whatever you want to do. Um, if somebody's gonna come in and say, oh, it's like one spin different or something. It's but two frames it's... faster. <laughs> oh, it is two frames faster. My, my sincere apologies. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's okay if you stick with your, stick with what works for you. Yeah. Um, so, both Saiyan and Etiquette are on the Archer fight. Um, Archer's easy, never causes any problems for us, to be honest. No, no, never. Um, and he definitely doesn't want to the the next time we face him nope that doesn't happen um i like kind of checking in on t-pat seeing how his fight here is going looks like it might be i think he's trying to get out of where you would need to heal but i think because raghorn's weak and poison it's gonna have to do a little menu after this um if it was one or the other you could use the first turn of the next fight to heal but low hit points plus poison, probably going to want a menu here. Otherwise, the Rhyhorn can get one-shotted, and then life is miserable. Yes. And you can see oh, Etiquette so healing. Now on the, saying on the Giovanni fight, this is a little different in uh, Pikachu than it is in Eevee. I'll let you explain the Eevee. When, um, so, you use Pikachu here. But you use two controllers. The first turn, um, Persian does fake out, so you don't know which one's gonna hit. And you're like, okay, well, if it hits my Pikachu, that's pretty useless. So you actually set up to plus six using the support trainer. So you, you're at plus six, and then you use Zippy Zap to knock out the Persian, and then go ahead and double kick plus helping hand the right. Uh, and that's just enough to KO it in one hit. Um, for Saiyan, and as you can see, he's through Giovanni. Nice fight. Yeah, and for Eevee, it's a little bit different. You usually one see it. Um, it's very concerning if you have a minus defense Eevee. Um, but what you do is you use your X attack, and then you Sizzly Slide the Persian, um, which is going to reduce its crit damage to you. And then if you're minus defense, you absolutely, definitely, positively need to heal. Otherwise, you're going to get uh, smacked around. But 
as you saw with etiquette and then i'm sure t-pat will do it um you don't need to heal you'll just get knocked down to maybe 10 or 15 hit points and then you just uh one shot the rhyhorn after that so um it can be a little scary with the persian there especially if you have a low defense ev but for both of these runners i think they're going to be just fine i'm um, getting out of here yeah, especially when when persian starts slashing you know you've got that critical hit damage um uh, mm -hmm. can get a little unnerving fortunately in this game uh, because the persian is burnt uh, the the critical hit does not hit through that burn damage so that's kind of nice that you just don't get obliterated etiquette oh, yeah. by the way picking up these extra pokeballs uh, i think that's a still really got a good. number of He's because got, he threw a like to do. a million against the crappy right <laughs> that's so right he yeah, definitely that's... needs to pick up some some extra ones here and i think he's hoping for a really nice route 17 later where you can get um look at his tracker here yeah so you can get of course the duo dodrio ponita rapidash um i don't think he's caught psyduck yet so but yeah, so he has Pidgey planned Etika's to get three not, evolutions yeah. there, and Psyduck planned. So hopefully they all show up right away, and uh, it's easy to... Ooh, yeah, and T-Pad just double-edges Persian, so that's easier, um, of course. <gasps> Survived down to just three barely! HP. Down to three HP. I mean, he will be fine. Uh, that's definitely that is, a risk, too. That is that's a scary uh, strat. Yeah, and that's one where I'm sure there are calculators for it, but generally you just have to chance it in the moment and hope things go well. Um, but given that the well, EV me, is just such a high this. level, that helps. Is that a strat that you undertake if, let's say, you were in Saiyan's shoes here? Because t has got some time to make up. Um, are we starting to see some initial... Okay, I'm behind. I need to, uh, I need to pick up some time here in a hurry. Yeah, I would say for T Pat, this was. A... Wow, did we just see another chancy? Um, I so believe I we think did for... on Saiyan's screen. Yeah. <laughs> for T Pat, given that the EV is high level, I think it's pretty standard. But if the EV were like 28 or 29, that would be very, very risky to make up time. Um, versus Saiyan, I think. I mean, if you were playing Eevee version, I think you would almost maybe just forego the double edge and just play it super safe. Because um, why not, right? You're ahead. Um, but yeah, we see the tower chancy, <laughs> a very, very rare spawn. Yes. Ugh. I mean, it's hard enough to get spawns in tower, much less a 1% uh, a chancy spawn. <laughs> right. Um, And Etiquette goes ahead, gets his Ghastly here. That's a nice, especially considering he's a little bit lower on catches. Uh, he really needed that Ghastly. So, oh, and unfortunately, the Ghastly kind of moves to a very awkward spot. But he's still With the Ultra Ball, this is not guaranteed. So let's cross our fingers collectively. You okay. Nice. nice. If that breaks uh, out it there, it's absolutely miserable. Because yeah. it, then it jerks all uh, around the screen, and oh, so I'm really glad he caught it there. Yeah, and the worst feeling, and actually, I, I saw Etiquette do it in uh, round one. I don't know if he did it today. Um, no, sometimes you actually pick up the nanabs in front of the underground tunnel um, mm -hmm. coming out of route uh, route five, uh, yeah. just because. Uh, you know, you can sometimes end up in a situation where you don't have any nanips, and for catching something like Ghastly, that's very, very awkward. Um, because it'll just, to your point, just start moving around the screen and do bad, bad things. Yeah. I'm one of those people, first off, I always nanab Ghastly, but also I never pick up those. I just hope I find nanabs along the run. So sometimes I get yeah. to this point and I'm like, oh crap. Because uh, you can see, like, T-Pad only has one nanab. Uh, yep, which he's going to use yep, here. That's... And that's because he got lucky and found it, but sometimes it doesn't happen, you know? Very nice, good throw yep. there. Um, again, I don't know if it's guaranteed, but I think that's a 
very high likelihood of catching there with the Ultra Ball. Anecdotally, and getting stuff. any sort of circle there is really helpful. Yeah. Um, and then Saiyan found the Ghastly too, finally, so all the runners get Ghastly. And uh, after this tower, the EVs are going to retire. Their job will be done. I think it's the same for Pika so too, right? Too. Yeah. T-Pat taking a little safer route through here, by the way. Um, you know, there's two routes you can take through this floor. Um, you can take... The, there's a rotator below. Uh, there's also this rotator up above. He chose to take the, the rotator um, up above, which is a little bit slower. But again, probably just a little extra safety there just to make sure, because you kind of have to squeeze below that rotator to avoid their vision. Um, mm -hmm. So just making sure that you're not getting into a fight that takes up a lot of extra time. So we're seeing J and J here on, on Saiyan screen. Um, Pikachu, um, so this fight to start off is a little bit different than the J&J we just saw a couple of minutes ago. Uh, because Weezing has Dark Pulse, you can no longer bring in uh, Rhyhorn reliably to to win this fight. So what Eevee does, or what Pikachu, excuse me, does is it sacrifices this poor oh no. innocent little pupper uh, for the greater good. It, 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 it sacrifices not in vain. Um, <laughs> so, essentially, you need something here that can actually, un unlike Puppers, uh, take a hit from this Weezing. And Cubone just happens to fit that description. So, you can see here, anytime Pikachu gets hit, it gets healed. Um, Oh my god, this is... Sorry to interrupt, but this is so rough for etiquette here. Etiquette with the... The Rhyhorn getting run. KO'd. Oh, the Eevee getting oh paralyzed boy. and doesn't get the glitzy glow off on the first attempt. This is oh, rough. Yeah. Meanwhile, Rule Saiyan, number one is don't get unlucky. And... Yeah, well, it's... Uh... <laughs> I hate to see that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Saiyan's fight went... A little bit more according to plan um and is through and his his pikachu i think fair to say did a magnificent job for him um yeah she can go retire and join up at the best. end of the run for the credits yes um but i will say though we'll... like saiyan's clearly ahead but this is far from over based on how like the Starmies oh, yeah. go and all that stuff. Like the first part of the run is almost just completely separate from, separate from the second half. Um, you know, after yeah. Koga's gym, none of this stuff's going to matter other than effectively the starting line um, with Saiyan being a little bit ahead. All it takes is one death in the wrong spot, okay. and one miss hydro know, pump. One missed Hydro Pump. Okay. Uh, I had... I, I was using Naomi Safe Strats in round one, and I just kept missing Hydro Pumps. And that was... <sighs> that was a death. Like, uh, you know, that can just happen here. Um, so, this is not over by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, again, I would say pretty clearly Saiyan is ahead. You can see that both in plot progression... Um, as well as number of Pokemon, but this is this is. Far yeah, I wonder what the the game's going to give us. Is it going to give us a rich get richer where Saiyan gets just an insane Starmie, and then etiquettes and T Pats are terrible, or are we going to get a little bit of a even playing field with Saiyan with a you know bad Starmie and etiquette and T Pat get a good one? You know, um, personally, yeah. just from a, pers a spectator perspective, I would prefer the latter. But it's totally random, so Saiyan could just get like an 1100 CP Staryu and just crush everything, you know? We'll have to see okay. how it goes. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and go for everybody getting a good star. Um, it's just nothing like the feeling of, of sitting there. By the way, Etiquette seeing a Pidgey on screen. Um, I wonder if he's going to go ahead and cut the bush here, because in his case, he really needs a Pidgey. Um, and getting that Pidgey catch right away 
that guarantees him those three Pokemon, Pidgey, Pidgeotto, Pidgeot. So normally you don't cut the bush here to get Pokemon, but the fact that he's seen that straight away, um, that mm -hmm. could be a strat for him just to just to make sure he gets that, because otherwise Pidgey's only a 5% spot on Route 17. Yeah, and some people uh, will do it for a Doduo as well, which I, you know, personally wouldn't, but you can, but yeah, I think the Pidgey is just so important. It is a consideration. We'll see if he does it here. He does do it. He does. Little yeah. bit of a safe move, losing a little bit of time, but guarantees that Pidgey, so I, I like I, it. I think I, it's a good play. I agree with it. I, I think you see a Pidgey there, and for him, this, this evens up his catch count because everything kind of comes in pairs, right? Like, except for this, which there's a three. Um, so this evens out his catch count. Um, in this situation, I, I, I would do it 100 times out of 100. Um, <laughs> so it does take some time, but you've got the Pidgey. You don't have to worry about it. Um, oh, nice play. He's got it. Saying on to Route 17. Uh, Rapid Ash right away. A, wow. He gets a egg. Or Ponita, and, sorry. By yeah, like, uh, a Do Duo for Etiquette. So Etiquette's nice. getting multiple of those catches knocked out right away. Um, yeah, Ponita here is very nice, especially in Pika. Um, the direction in Pika is to actually not Rare Candy the um, pony and just wait for it to naturally evolve because you have Arcanine mm. already. Um, True. But yeah. if that's the last catch you get on Route 17, that tends not to happen because you don't have enough catches between um, between the end of Route 17 and Blaine, which is kind of when you really start to need Rapidash um, for that to make sense. So... Good to see that as a first catch on on Pika. Glowing do duo for that. Nice yeah. glowing do duo. Which is good. Yeah, it helps, this... but still really looking for that Ponita. Yeah, and this will also be interesting for T Pat because he's already caught that Pidgey as we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Um how so he's got Pidgeotto and Pidgeot marked, so it looks like he is gonna try and catch a Pidgeotto. Um, it's a similar situation what we were talking about with Ghastly, where it will just start ping-ponging around the screen. Um, will he go ahead and do that? Will he find an alternative? Um, you know, he's a little low on catches, so he probably does need to go ahead and, and find that Pidgeotto. Yeah, Etiquette just praying that this Ponita spawns, and a Psyduck, ideally. Yeah, and again, etiquette even one more patch on of grass. T pad is. Um, oh, come on. Do duo. Yeah, etiquette picking up the silver razzes. He's already preparing for tentacle strats. Oh, uh, this no is a little Ponita. rough here for etiquette. This is a little rough. I think he rough. still has the he's repel from repel, earlier, though. And he's still got yep. three lures. Um, he did not pick up the super lure, so this is a. He really needs that Ponita to show up. He now. really needs to get these sooner rather than later. There's Psyduck. But At what point do you just say Ponita. I'm not getting the Ponita? I I think you gotta you gotta give it everything you can, especially again his catch count is low, uh, and it, it just with Eevee it just loses so much time. Uh, if you don't have it. So I, I think you've got to pretty much have to wait it out, at least in my view. Yeah, and for his 50, he has Tentacool already marked. So basically, if yeah. that doesn't happen, we might be looking at a Ditto Magmar catch or something. But yeah, and let's hope that doesn't we, happen. We do not want to see that. Um, I think <laughs> waiting for the pony and just taking that necessary time loss. Uh, is going to be the way to go. Saiyan is now leaving Route 17, uh, kind of putting a stranglehold on this on this race and this lead. Uh, you know, this is he, he has had the catches go his way. He has had the RNG go his way. Uh, he's had the fights go his way, and we're really seeing that now. Oh, thank God for Pony. Etiquette. There's the Ponyta. Oh. 
I feel like if it showed up any later than this, oh, and it's trolling him too. If it showed up any later than this, it's just like, oh, so painful. But fortunately, he didn't have to wait too long. Yeah. Oh. Pat's still on the lookout for a Pidgeotto. Um, we'll see if he can uh, can find yeah. that. That's he Pat actually both. does not have Tentacool planned, so that could be the backup that Pidgeotto doesn't show up. Um, obviously, we like to skip Tentacool if possible, but uh, yeah. that would be Tentacool, an option for another, him. Another, well, uh, another, uh, another. Um, difficult to catch poke because uh, it'll just swim back and forth and it just won't stop <laughs> you're like uh please yeah. stop please attack me uh, but tentacle is a good nanab candidate as well at least for me doesn't go up and down yeah, like it's... a ghastly would but it's the left and right is still pretty frustrating sometimes it's also frustrating because you're catching it in water so you have to use one c uh I like to use the Silver Raz, and you saw Etiquette pick those up uh, to mm -hmm. try and increase that catch chance. Um, but you can't use both the Nanab and the Silver Raz, so you kind of have to pick one. <laughs> do you want it, you know, floating around the screen, or do you want it to be a fairly difficult catch on water? Um, so Tentacool is not ideal at all. all right. Let's see if Sane gets the the star you there's a tentacle a skipping tenta, that which he can pass up can we get the water stone still haven't seen the star you yet though just like holding my breath here uh oh Oh, star. Oh, okay. There it is. There we go. Just in time. All right. Let's look at that CP. 1070 1075. something. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. It's above average. That is above average. It doesn't mean it's good. Uh, we just, you know, the, the combat power is a reflection of just how good all the stats are. So it's kind of, it's kind of an aggregate of all six stats. We don't care about all six stats because, for instance, Starmie is not a physical attacker. Um, so you could have a situation where you have a really, really, really good star, but it's just not good in the stats that it needs to be good in. Um, that star you looks really HP weighted, by the way. Oh, Stan does the, the menu here. Is this normal? Normally I wait till in the mansion right before Scientist Head. Do it if you have no other catches. Um, but that's a that's a passable star. It's probably a little below average in special attack. Um, it's also slow, but again, passable. You can see here, this is what I was talking about earlier. Because Saiyan caught the pony later, he's just going to go ahead and use that extra rare candy on the pony um, to evolve it to Rapidash so he can ride it around. All right, let's see how etiquette goes. So I would say Saiyans is I would say Saiyans is average star, but slow. We need some spawns for etiquette here. Yeah, etiquette uh, way that, back that, there. Uh, was way back. There's another okay. oh, there's a star and there's a That's nice to All right, get. What are we looking at there? here? 1037. 1037. Oh no! That is below average. I mean, it could still be uh, good, but okay. And T Pats. 1015. Rich, rich so get both richer. below average for etiquette and T Pats. Etiquette was showing off a run the other day when he had a 1019 star, and he was goaded in both speed and special attack. He's hoping for one that's similar to this. Yeah, I mean, it could still have a good special attack and speed. We just have to see the stats here. Kind of sweating though. Yeah, that's not the greatest. Certainly for etiquette and for T Pat as well. Uh, but Thane's Star is not 
incredible. I mean, again, it was above average in terms of CP, um, but I would not call that a great star. So um, there could be an opportunity if their stars are, are good. Mm -hmm. Saying with his last catch of the run, which is Grimer. Okay, T Pack going back to get this tentacle, which he absolutely needed to get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both the runners for Eevee getting the tentacle. T Pack only yeah, has three Ultra it. Balls left. Um, yeah, this could be a little dicey if this breaks out. Thing, but he should be it's fine. Not. As long as the coughing kind of catch doesn't go poorly. Yeah, coughing you can kind of double great ball. Penta, you absolutely need that ultra ball for it. Um, and T Pack gets blasted by a star. Which somehow was even worse than all the other three stars that these guys got. So, good thing he didn't catch that one. <laughs> Oh, Magmar time. Magmar for Summit. Four uh, Magmars and a chance. What's a chance? The dream. What on That's earth? That's the dream. Was that? <laughs> or the nightmare. Probably more of the latter. <laughs> I mean, Saiyan's got his share of Magmars, too. Yes. Can we make a Magmar meme category? <laughs> Catch 60 Magmars. The Mega Magmar category. Okay. Let's see how Scientist Head goes. We're hoping for no Thunderbolt crit yeah. on Starmie. That's the one or, thing that can or be. Or the a other thing, egg. which I won't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do bad things. This Ted is a jerk. Um, and I've had multiple runs at Ted. You. Our boy okay. here. And he's good. All right. Yeah, that electrode can crit you and just straight up kill the Starmie. It can also paralyze, and then you get fully paralyzed, and that's bad. Um, so, fortunately for Saiyan, no adverse anything there. Um, <laughs> I just want to say it. This run is extremely fast from Saiyan. Um, oh, yeah. I, understanding he's he is the world record holder in Pika, um, and I'm not saying we're necessarily going to challenge that here today, but this is an incredible run. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if towards the end of the run if he's on like a world record. I was going to say PB, but no world record pace. If he just says, "All right, let's go for it," <laughs> or if he just plays yeah. it safe and just finishes out in first place. Um, I mean. My usual rule of thumb, uh, and admittedly, I'm not anywhere near as good as Saiyan is. Uh, my rule of thumb is, you know, and again, my PB is right at around 303. My rule of thumb is if I'm out of mansion in two hours with 45 catches, I'm pretty much right on PB. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to be out of mansion in 157 and with one more catch than that so like this is this is right there um in terms of pb and yeah. world record pace so yeah i think it's exciting i think fun. the slow star might be the issue but we'll yeah. see i mean anything can happen here yeah, so I believe right. this star will go ahead and get... Uh, this is where the uh, the payoff on that low speed will we'll see it. Um, because the Rapidash here for Blaine has 117 speed. I do not believe this Starmie has 117 speed. So um, that Starmie, or that Rapidash will use Flare Blitz. Um that has a chance to burn that is not ideal so we'll see how this fight goes this is the one where this where the speed really comes into play though yeah and so that's um, a good see... ted fight for t-pat um the thunderbolt yeah, hit ted the rapid ash so he doesn't need to heal let's see how it goes for etiquette here hopefully something similar where thunderbolt just hits the rapid ash and then we call it a day Oh, Whoa. I was 
Ooh, I oh, thought that was yeah, a crit for a second. Oh my goodness. Oof. Uh, that right, has got to be though. bad. Yeah. That's got to be bad special attack or special defense on T Pat Star. That did a ton of damage. Uh, but through that fight, fortunately. Yeah, no special defense for Etiquette Star there. Oh, sorry, I said T Pat. I meant Etiquette. I've made that mistake <laughs> multiple times now. Um, oh, also, Saiyan a very get nice start for Saiyan. No confuse. Uh, so that saves a turn. I. Uh, Get your bingo cards out because the rich get richer. Um, now is the moment of truth. What All will right, this rapid action looks? Fortunately, um, even if there is a burn, he did get a full heal. Does effectively have an extra full heal because he does, did not get confused. About a 75% chance to get confused. And he does it. He he's just fine. That's not going to take any extra turns. Um, I think he outspeeds his nine tails. He mm -hmm. does. So yeah, perfect more than one thirteen, less than one seventeen. <laughs> yeah, perfect fight. Um, and he is sub two hours blank. My goodness, this is fast. And just for those unfamiliar with the format here, for this uh, first place gets three points, uh, second place gets one, and then you get a bonus point if your time is faster than the median of all the runners for that round. Um, and then third place gets zero. So I'm saying this just because second place is very important, and Etiquette and T-Pat are very close. Same catch count and just a few seconds apart. So it's not just about getting first or nothing, but getting second is important. So I would imagine both of these runners are going to push to, to beat the other one and try to get that second place and secure. I would imagine two points because I can't imagine either of these runners is going to be above the median time. I completely agree there. I, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I, I can't imagine any of these runners being below median um, in this round unless something catastrophic were to happen. So. I can't imagine uh, that a, uh, you know, they go for the hydro pumps and they go for risky strats competing against each other, and maybe something goes poorly. Um, still would probably right. be better than the median time, but, um, you know, there are instances where you're, you can miss your hydro pumps or you can get one-shotted, um, especially in Victory Road. And then there's all the variants in the Elite Four, especially with Agatha. So I think we're in for an exciting finish. Um, are. I think all three runners have have compelling uh, storylines here uh, down the stretch. Saying how close to PB slash world record can he get? Etiquette and T-Pat, these guys are are neck and neck. Um, and yeah, the difference between two points and zero points is going to be huge here. So um, let's that's just even assuming that not much changes between between now and the end of the run, which that's, as we know with this game, that's not necessarily a, a valid assumption. So yeah. uh, will be a lot of fun to see where this goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, Etiquette got confused there. I didn't see if T-Pat did, but um, that did eat up an it's extra turn. Fight. So yeah, yeah, it's standard. It's, it's actually very lucky to not get confused, which I know we've said it 20 times, but the rich get richer, man. Just <laughs> yeah. saying, not getting confused. Kind of saying. Like, <laughs> uh, little side up, see the whole thing. Oh. Yep. To say, Goodbye, this is uh, another one of those kind of pause moments in the run. Um, no, just kind of. Yeah. In chat, T-Pat just... saying he's about on 303 pace, which yep. is a really, really good run. But for T-Pat standards, I'm sure he's like, oh, this is terrible. But 303 pace is really good. PBs so... are 303, T-Pat. Like, you're, you're doing <laughs> Don't great. rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all relative, you know? That's why we have this Swiss format and we make these matches like exciting. You know, we put three really, really great runners against each other. 
Um, so that way they have to push each other to the limit here to see who can win. Right. I mean, it's also it's also cool because you know we're seeing what I would imagine are three potential, if not guaranteed, semifinalists mm -hmm. right here, right now, um, and. You know, this is going to be a great preview of, you know, you could imagine a scenario where these three runners are, are racing again uh, down yeah. the line. They're they're just that good. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So be able to see this kind of caliber of run. This is it's a great showcase for this game. Um, and uh, being able to see it at this high of a level and how well these guys are playing this game is this yeah, so I think T Pat's 10 seconds ahead, and then if their trackers are updated, of course, one Pokemon ahead. But from actual progress in the game, T Pat's just 10 seconds ahead, so that's pretty freaking close. Yeah. And that 10 seconds, a minute, two minutes, that can swing <laughs> immediately. Uh, Okay, maybe not on Lieutenant Surge, but there are certain other fights that are coming up. Um, yeah, I don't think Surge is going to be the differentiator here. No, no. Um, no. Maybe, uh, maybe Archer will show up again. That guy was kind of interesting. I wonder if he might produce some variance between these runners. Um, Gosh, spoiler yeah, alert, I'm just... yes, almost certainly will. Oof. I always am nervous for the archer fight, even just watching other runners do it. And it's not even like it's a, a quick one, like something like Scientist Ted, where you're seeing if there's a crit or not. You're just waiting for like the five second pan of all the Pokemon and all the trainers for that super slow fight, just building up the cringe inside of you, hoping that yeah. the right moves happen. Meanwhile, <laughs> if you're like me at this point, like let's say you're on PV pace or close to it or in a race like this, your hands are just wetting, and you're like, okay, I'm just, you know, and the, the, the anticipation just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. Like, these guys are already starting to think, like, okay, how's Archer going to go? How's Archer going to go? How's Archer going to go? Um, because at this point, there's there's not a whole lot standing between them and Archer. Uh, this menu, of course, you want to optimize how you're doing, but that, that's about it. Uh, you know, Erica is a trivial pre-turn fight. You just psychic everything, and it's it's uh, it's gone. I mean, Starmie for for this gym rush, Starmie is just way over leveled. It's got type advantages. Uh, yeah, because these yeah, are the gyms like, you would normally in a regular playthrough do very early on in the run. So our Starmie is just absurdly over leveled at this point. Um, and just brief so, shout out, we do have another race that's actually going on right now. So you got two monitors or you want to do split screen, be sure to load up Pokemon Speedrun TV 2. So the same channel as this, but just with two at the end. And you can watch another race at the same time that's just about to start. So I uh, encourage us. you, you know, all you, to you, you get the dual screen going. This. Yeah, yeah, don't miss the end of this, the, but you can keep do, that do one up in the background. <laughs> Don't leave us. <laughs> Just get and two you know you two enjoy our up. commentary so, so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Saiyan now, um, you can see Saiyan. A little Abra convention on his screen, by the way. Three Abras. Um in that little patch of grass that was funny um so saiyan is now heading into silfco and so after a nice little 10 minute respite of starmy just indiscriminately knocking out everything uh, we've now arrived at a point in the game where that's no longer the case um so starmy is gonna need a combination of a little bit of help from his friends because this first fight uh, against Blue, for some reason, Blue decides to help by fighting you? Um, sure. Thanks, Blue, for fighting us. Um, <laughs> just wants to his first test Pokemon. us or whatever. He's just 
yeah. just wants to annoy us with cool. an executor. <laughs> cool, cool buddy. Yeah, he, his first Pokemon is an executor. And, of course, our Starmie, which has an electric move, a psychic move, and a, and water moves, has nothing for executor. Uh, so we need to bring in our old trusty pal, Dodrio. You can also bring in Rapidash or Magmar if you have it. Uh, no yeah. Magmars that I Yeah, saw. things are going well if you have a Magmar at this point, for sure. If you have a Magmar, yeah. there are some, some things have happened. Um, but you bring in your trusty pal, Dodrio, and you see uh, saying yes, if you don't have the Dodrio. So would I be correct in saying Dodrio is the safer option because you just X-Attack Dodrio, Drill Pack, and kill it, versus if you're yes. going for a little bit of speed, you can keep the Rapid Ash and you use Fire Blast, but Fire Blast can miss. Right? That's correct. Yes, Dodrio yeah. is the safer option because you just X attack, drill pack, done. Um, what's annoying about that is you have to move Dodrio into slot two. Um, normally, Rapid Ash is in slot two, and you're just like, oh, do I have to move this thing? It's annoying. I have to menu for it. Uh, so if you want to play safe, then yes, the sound play is to go ahead and switch. Um, and just do it that way. It also is nice because um, it can actually help on the Jesse and James fight. Spoiler alert, we're going to see Jesse and James again. Not that we haven't seen them before. Uh, it actually helps on the Jesse and James fight um, after, we're, after this lovely Archer fight. It's saying, actually going to go Ooh. ahead and save before the Archer fight. That is Why not, something right? I admit I have not seen, but you know, if he's got to know, he's just so far ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, so you can actually stomp with the rapid ash on uh, on that Jesse and James fight, whereas Dodrio is just kind of like oh, randomly trail pack. Do nothing <laughs> at all. Uh, so rapid ash does have the better high end. I wonder if you start to see that. Uh, from these other two runners to try and make up a little bit of time. Um, Are we going to see a Rich get richer but... moment again on Archer 2? Let's see. Okay, we have a, v we have a VGC start, protect, self-destruct. Uh, you're not going to get a three turn out of that, but you feel pretty good at this point. You're not getting Thunderbolt looped by Electrode, um, so that's that's fine. This Golbat does have Crunch, um, and there's a good chance to get hit by it. It's that's okay. Yeah, so. I didn't see if the EV runners did the swaps, but I would imagine if they're going for pushing the time, they have Rapid Ash. Let's see. Starmie and Rapid Ash. Rapid yeah, that's going for that. it. So, yeah, again, going for the little bit of a higher end. Um, willing to take that little extra risk. And it hits, and he hits nice. the Fire Blast. So, optimal scenario there for T-Pat. Uh, he'll keep on moving and didn't have to worry about swapping. So, definitely a better higher end as a result of that. Ooh, so Cubone putting in work. The Cubone it to... taking care of the rat. He doesn't have to heal on this turn. That's a that's a fine. I think what was that? Four turn um, archer. Uh, An etiquette also going for the rapid ash. Um, again, trying to save any time he can. Also gets the hit. So both both EV runners, both etiquette and T Pat. Get the hit with Rapid Ash, uh, get that optimal blue fight. Um, they're gonna head right into Archer Two here in a minute. Yeah, so we had a five-turn Archer fight for Saiyan, so there is potential time gain if uh, you know if the EV runners have a good fight here, three or four-turn fight. Yeah. Counting be... Plus, is hard. You Saiyan say. saved, you know? right? Like so, mm -hmm. playing it safe, here. but. I don't know. So things go wrong for him. Things go right for the Eevee runners. Um, we've still got, you know, 50 minutes left. <laughs> so yeah, a lot I, can happen. I think Saiyan We're only two thirds of the way luxury. through. Saiyan probably has the luxury of playing a little safer. Uh, but uh, 
certainly the other two runners just trying to one up one another uh, they do not have that luxury so you'll see a lot more risky strats coming from these two and you might see something from saying calculated risk along the way you never know all right so both i'll, I'll take t pats if you take etiquettes uh, <laughs> all right we got two archer fights going at the same time. Unfortunately, at a Thunderbolt for uh, T-Pat, which means he's going to have to heal this straight away. Um, heal the star straight away. He did get the KO of the Muck, which was nice. Oh, Etiquette gets the Dream turn one. Oh, Etiquette gets the Self-Destruct and no Protect. Three turn fight possible here. Oh, oh! Almost KOs the star. He did not heal. Oof. Wow. T Pat is starting to send it. But now he has to heal because this rat has quick attack. But he's not healing. And, that, and that's. Oh no. That's star, star getting painted right there. Out of heals, he says. He's oh. out of heals, unfortunately. Um. So that this is, so is a little rough. bit of a this is a problem uh, because he's now got to revive this. He's not going to get the same amount of exp. Oh my goodness! So we've just immediately swung, and this is exactly what we're talking about uh, when we say these this can swing very very quickly. Uh, this is advantage etiquette now. For yeah, sure. he had a very good archer fight here. Um, yeah, archers cleaned up there, and T Pat's gonna have to just patchwork some <laughs> some stuff here to try yeah. to get out of this fight alive. And then I, I imagine take his... a lot of risky one C fights to he's, try to finish he's out. He's gonna bring the star back out. He's got to be careful because yeah, the the gold back can just attack the star. Um, so he's got to be I think careful. He's... Barely out of quick attack range. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he was a barely safe there. Still got the wheezing to deal with too. Yeah. Meanwhile, Saiyan's Very just robot. finishing this. <laughs> yeah, Geo is much easier this time around. Rolling. Uh... Yeah, it's a four-turn fight. You set up one next special attack while the Persian fake outs, and then you just go in with Scald on the other on, on the three Pokemon that Giovanni has. It's a really easy fight. Uh, but yeah, etiquette. Yeah, same with the, not just um, opening up a lead, but opening up probably thirty to forty seconds worth of lead. Again, that was not the case before this fight. Uh, so you're you're seeing. Uh, just how much of an impact Archer 2 can have, uh, both in a good way and in a bad way, unfortunately, uh, from, from T-Pat's perspective. Yeah, it's a shame that a lot of PBs and potential world records come down to just having a bad fight there or a good fight there. And, you know, it's over two hours into the run and you're just praying you get lucky. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's frustrating well, when it goes poorly. From T-Pat's perspective, we're not out of those kinds of fights yet. So he's still got some opportunities to make up some time on etiquette. Um, but I, I, there's there's no sugarcoating this. Like, that was a rough, rough archer. Um, and so we'll see what happens there. Um, Saiyan just doing his cleanup. He's going to get this uh, get this Lapras and this rare candy from the seventh floor of Sylph. Um, mm -hmm. He'll then uh, ride around on his Rapidash and grab a Porygon from the southwest part of Saffron. Um, and that'll be 50 pokes. You see, he's already just gone ahead and marked 50 pokes so he doesn't have to do it later. Uh, and we, we've, we've alluded to needing 50 pokes just for our folks who haven't run the game or are newer to the game. Uh, that's the requirement to get into Koga's gym. Um, if you don't have 50 Pokemon, uh, you will get, as we like to call it, getting kicked by Koga. 
and you will just not be able to get in. So that's a lot of the basis of this run is, hey, how can we get to 50 Pokemon so we can get into Ko's gym? So, yeah, and that's one of the things I like that. about this. Um, I've speed ran other games where it's a lot more formulaic and everything kind of happens the same way each time. Um, but this game, no two runs are the same because, you know, sometimes a Chansey shows up, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes a Rhyhorn shows up, sometimes it doesn't. You know, the the path to 50 Pokemon has a lot of variance in it and, you know, you need to be able to adapt. But that's one thing that keeps this game really fresh um, is that, you know, you do need to get to 50 Pokemon in one way or another while managing your levels and your experience, which may sound daunting but after a few iterations you kind of get the hang of it and it makes speedrunning this game really fun a couple yeah, interesting things to note on Saiyan's are, shop uh... oh, a couple quick things to note on Saiyan's shop he did not purchase um any full heals so he feels he must feel he's in a good enough position that it's like okay i'm good um yeah if you get hit with status effects earlier and let's say you run out of your paralyzed heals or, or things of that nature then you just load up on the full heals there but you didn't even get confused in uh blaine's gym so he has the two all healing items plus i'm sure paralysis heals and things of that nature so no reason to spend the couple seconds buying those full heals there um, yeah, I admit with Pika, I tend to buy full heals pretty much regardless, um, because we don't pick up or we don't purchase uh, paralyzed heals because Pikachu doesn't get paralyzed, uh, mm -hmm. or burn heals because we're usually one hitting the Starmie. So when I play Pika, I tend to get those full heals, but I, to your point in Eevee, that tends to be a different story. Yeah, because at the end, there's plenty of uh, status effects that may go your way. Well, I guess yep. don't go your way as they <laughs> affect you here. Um, but we're going to watch this interesting Sabrina fight, which we're yep. hoping for optimally no light screen at all. Um, second best situation that, is light screen myth. turn that one. Is yeah, it's happened to me like once. Um, but the worst case scenario is light screen turn two, so... We're kind of hoping that we just see light screen, turn one, um, turn two, it would make this fight take a little bit longer. So we'll see what the Mr. Mind decides to do. And that is the standard fight, is to get light screen, turn one. Okay, And there that's it exactly is. what yep. we see. Um, so he'll go ahead, X special attack. He's kind of working around the light screen at this point because that halves all of his special attacks. Um, so he'll go ahead, get up to plus four, so he use two special, X special attacks, an X speed, and then he'll scald twice. Well, he might need to Hydro Pump here because that mm -hmm. special attack doesn't look very good. Um, and he got the Mr. Mind. He got the Hydro Pump hit. So one for one on Hydro Pumps for the Hydro Pump counter. Um, yeah, let's keep a running tally here. See if we end up at 80%. I have a feeling one of these runners is going to get turned to light speed. Yeah, this is, uh, so Sane's got a little extra experience on his start. Um, is it already leveled there? Normally it levels after the Jinx. But... 222, probably 223 after Sabria. I, I cannot emphasize that. It's just so fast. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Unfortunately, T-Path and, of course, Etiquette are going to shop soon, and T-Path will have heals again. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully I'm, I'm no more Starmie for, deaths. I'm looking for X defenses here. Um, see if they purchase the X defense, and Etiquette goes ahead and does that. That signals to me that he's going to go ahead and use 1C strats on Giovanni, uh, Giovanni 3, who totally isn't the gym leader of the 8th gym. Uh-huh. Nope, that's not the case. <laughs> uh, let's see if T-Pat does the same thing and goes ahead and buys that X defense. I assume he will, uh, because again, you want all that incremental time you can get. Um, but it'll really keep us on the edge of our seats, because uh, critical hits go through is. X defenses. So, mm -hmm. uh, 
it, it definitely increases some variance, especially since Duck Trio has a couple of high crit rate moves. <laughs> Yeah, and it's one of the Starmies had really bad special defense, but I think their regular defense might be fine. We'll see. Yeah, et um, Etiquettes was the, uh, the one that that uh, almost got mollywopped by that Electrode. Yeah, that was not pretty. So we've got and got a bunch of important fights going on here at once. Uh, but we'll try to keep track of all three of them at the same time, but they're going to be overlapping. Uh, we're going to see Etiquette and T-Pat take on Sabrina, and we'll be looking for uh, those turn one light screens or no light screens at all, maybe? Maybe save a little bit of time. Uh, but over on Saiyan's screen, we're seeing a fight that's every bit as much important, and that is Caden. Um, first, he is going to get the Koga check, make sure he can indeed count to 50. Um, well and he done. Can. <laughs> well done, Saiyan. You are in with 50 Pokemon. Um, let's take a quick look at Etiquette, see how his fight looks. You get a pretty good sense right after the, uh, the first couple of turns as to how that's going to go. So then we'll pivot over to Caden. Okay, turn one light screen for etiquette. So that's that's going to be the same fight we just saw over on Saiyan's screen. Um, let's pivot over to Caden here for a second on Saiyan's screen. Um, this muck can be a jerk. You have to set up an X special attack on it. Um, and it has some trolling moves. Ooh, and that's protect. actually one of Perfect. them. But fortunately, Saiyan didn't attack. So actually, that's the ideal is to have... Uh, turn one protect from Caden. Uh, whereas you don't want this bee drill to protect because it just controls and wastes turns in time. Uh, perfect. Light Caden screen fight. third one for T Pad as well. So good Sabrina yep. for the EV runners. Good, good Sabrina for both runners. Perfect Caden um, on Satan's Saiyan screen. Um, so nice fights there. Uh, and moving on to go on ahead and take on Koga. Um, Pat got a burn on Mr. Mime, which feels like happens about 75% of the time. Uh, for those newer to the game, uh, that actually can be one of those things that just slows you down a little bit if there are status effects that you inflict on Pokemon or have inflicted on you. Because there's a certain chance that there be what's called status lag. That just takes a couple of extra seconds to get through that. So saw that on TPAT screen. It costs them a couple of seconds getting that burn. All right. So the dream Koga is that we're using just self destructs. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, it explodes! It explodes! What is going on, man? This is okay. Nuts. Uh, All the luck. Wow. Okay. Check his PC. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I need to get the seed of this run. <laughs> yeah, can, can, can you forward this over to us? Okay, and saying it finally gets a little unlucky uh, getting a, a protect from Golbat. All that does is waste a turn, uh, but he'll keep right on moving from that. Finally, the muck. No protect from the muck. Awesome, Ooh. awesome Koga for Saiyan. <sighs> Only gets one protect in the entire gym. No trolls on Caden. That's that's as good as you can ask for. The only real bad thing was like the um, Archer 2 fight, really. Everything else for Saiyan has gone really, really well. And even then, that was five turns, and I wouldn't even. Yeah, that that's bad. not super bad. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, T Pat's. T-Pats was legitimately bad. Uh, right. <laughs> T-Pats had, unfortunately, multiple situations where, personally, I would just rage quit <laughs> and start over. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can't do that in the race, right? you got to adapt and deal with it. So despite all the bad luck, T-Pat and Etiquette are both very close. Well, Yazarian, if 
by some chance that comes up in a race, let's say, that might be on Saturday. Uh, and you're just <laughs> like, you know, I don't want to keep going. <laughs> I, I, one of your round yeah. two opponents who may or may not be saying this as we speak. Um, <laughs> oh, and etiquette gets a uh, minimize and protect. Oh, this no. is where Kate starts to troll. Oh, no. Okay, and he went for two protects. Fails on the second protect. Uh, so goes ahead and knocks it out. It will be a little unfortunate for etiquette because he's down some psychics already, but... Uh, oh, my gosh. Much more troll here. of a Caden fight for etiquette. But again, I, I don't think we're comparing etiquette to Saiyan, right? We're comparing etiquette to T-Pat, so we need to see how Caden does for T-Pat here. Yes. Let's see Saiyan if, uh, has... has Saiyan has just broken the game at this point. Like, this is... He is on pace, you know, for the best run. I think it's fair to say, and Jack can correct me if I'm wrong, best runs we've certainly had so far in this entire tournament. Um, it's yeah, we've a, had some really great runs. I mean, in the first round, Saiyan put up a 301, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, I mean, I think is, he might beat this that is... this time. This is better than that. T-Pat with a much friendlier Caden. Um, no trolling. It just went straight for turn one protect. So that was nice to see from his perspective. Um, that Beedrill, I think, protects about 250% of the time. Um, so gets the turn one protect. Not the perfect Caden, but nonetheless still a very good fight. Uh, etiquette gets turn one protect on Weezing, which is exactly what you want to see. Um, and he can just start to sweep from here. Um, he'll get, you know, the usual protects, but um, it's pretty much free from here for him. Mm -hmm. There's a protect. Again, uh, we're going to be watching that, the psychic PP usage for Etiquette. He's down to three already. He's got to use another one on Muck. Um, so that will actually come into play because he's got to um, he's got a psychic um, the Venusaur he's got a psychic the, um, he's got a vile plume. he's got a psychic uh, so he's getting low there especially yeah, since he one... just used protect again he's down to one psychic uh, so that may be a center heal for him to be honest yeah, so for those unfamiliar, um, you need to use a lot of Psychics in this gym, and then there are a couple Pokemon later you absolutely need Psychic for, so if you get a lot of Protects, you end up wasting a lot of Psychics, and then uh, you might be kind of uh, <laughs> pigeonholed and, and screwed over later in the run um, by not having Psychics. Because normally Starmie can just kill everything with Scald, for example. Um, but the psychics are really important for a couple fights, so that's why we're paying attention Sorry to Sorry to interrupt. Saiyan there. is going 1C. He's going 1C so on ahead. Samuel. He is going. He is going. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see the Hydro Pump. Hydro Let's Pump see hit. It. Nice. Hydro Pump hit. Let's go. Two for two. Yeah, we don't think it's PB pace for Saiyan. Um, it's really kind of hard to judge without seeing like proper splits. Um, I think it's a very, very good pace, but his PB is the world record, so right. I don't quite think it's that fast, but it's very, very fast. It might be the fastest I, run I, of this race. This is not looking at chat at the moment, but I'm interested to hear if chat thinks this could be sub three. Yeah, I'm interested in what they say too some of the more expert runners. Some of the people who have been on sub three pace before, for example. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I wouldn't know what that's like, so. <laughs> yeah, so this Giovanni fight coming one, up for Saiyan is the one One C into Geo, he is sending it. I love it. <laughs> um, so we're looking here and uh, this is where that X, uh, X defense would come into play. Um, just so you don't get killed by that uh, Doug Trio early on. 
And this is actually, in Pika, it's really interesting because you buy this X Defense back in Pewter. So he bought this X Defense over two hours ago. Uh, yes, for Pika, you always buff up. He went straight oh, He's for just going X for it. Oh my attack. god. Wow. Ooh. Saiyan's just going for us. it, dude. Whoa! Wow. This is even with the he save have, before he Archer 2. calculated that his Starmie had good enough defense to be able to survive two Earth. My goodness! That is a risky play, unless you like oh, really, really know this goodness. game. Oh my goodness! He is going all in. No mercy. Just foot full on, wow. on the gas pedal. <laughs> That Starmie does have good defense. I just took a quick look. It has 109 defense. So, uh, Saiyan does have those ranges up, I'm sure, and was was aware, like, okay, this is pretty good from my perspective. Uh, wow. I, I'm, I am in shock. This is... is he is going... Now, there is yeah. going to be one thing that limits him a little bit. His special attack is pretty low. Uh, it was 128 at level 50. Uh, that In all likelihood, that will lose some time in Elite Four. He will probably have to set up to X, to set up three X special attacks on Lorelei. Uh, mm -hmm. He'll likely have to do the same on Champion. Uh, so there is going to be some time loss from that. That said, this is incredible <laughs> pace. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to okay, see what now, the two other runners do for Giovanni and if they go for the same risky strat. I can't imagine they will, yeah. but I don't know. We'll see. It'll be interesting. They're very, very close to each now, other. Fan's rival five fight should be relatively safe. He's got the psychics to do it. Uh I'm going to turn my attention probably to Etiquette and T-Pat here for a second, because Etiquette, as you can see, is one seeing uh, one seeing the Samuel fight. I would assume T-Pat is going to do the same thing. They've got to hit an 80% Hydro Pump. If they miss it, this King has Megahorn. That Megahorn is very likely to take out the Starmie. So... No! That, that, that's a... <laughs> Wait, what did Nidoking do? A Megahorn missed. Not punished. My goodness. So we're three out of four on Hydro Pumps. Yep. Oh my god. Uh, oh, 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 and that's oh, it lives. He survived the Megahorn. Oh my <laughs> goodness. And he gets the Hydro Pump KO. Uh, oh. Jeez. So Etiquette and T-Pad both miss Hydro Pump. And they are both spared. They're they just synced going. up. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You. Oh, I'm gonna take a drink from my Stanley here. Yeah, because I'm, you know, that guy who has a Stanley. <laughs> I look forward to reading chat later and seeing who's making fun of me for saying that. No, no one in chat would do that. No, never. So the T Pad's okay, definitely gonna so... have to heal before the fight, though, versus Etiquette does not. So that's yes. a little bit of a time difference there, too. Etiquette is indeed one seeing. Etiquette is looking for not critical hits. Critical hits are the enemy at this point for both Etiquette and T Pat. Because they're going to both put up that X defense that we thought Saiyan was going to do, uh, but he did not. So, okay, here's the X defense. No crit there. No crit on the second one, and now he can sweep. Okay, yeah, Etiquette is fine. through. Etiquette's through. He's going to need to heal before Rival 5, but he'll be fine. Let's check on T-Pat. Okay, no crit turn one. 
He's got two more he's got to get through. No crit turn two. And he got a little cheeky. Used slash turn three. Uh, nice for T-Pad, actually, that that did not crit. Not only because a crit would have been very bad, uh, but because he's going to have enough HP to actually not heal before Rival 5. So T-Pad's going to make up a little bit of time here. And we're having uh, Amber confirm in chat that Saiyan is plus three seconds on the world record. Wow. And that's insane. Oh, <laughs> uh, if... Um, if he misses the world record by like three seconds because he saved before Archer 2. Oh, mm. oh, man. <laughs> I'm sure winning the race is also just important though too, so. Also say just lost. It feels like he's going for it though. He was... like... Now let's see what he does here on Naomi. Um to see Naomi on this fight is very risky. He's gonna go ahead and two see it. Um that one C on Naomi is extremely risky. One C, uh, let's go! No, it's, he's got 2C. He's got 2C out. Oh, yeah. Is, um, it, is the 2C hiding behind us? He's got oh, 2C. Okay. Uh, he's abandoned yeah, that, the 2C that, that way just, back there. It is such a risky fight um, because you have you have to hit a Hydro Pump, and it's, yeah. I, I Anyone who was watching my run the other other day can, can vouch just how scary this fight is. Even with the stage strats, it can be scary. Uh, so yeah, with the, the Samuel 1C... Like, as you saw, you can survive one hit, even if it's, you know, questionable. But here, because you have to uh, special attack and then use your Hydro Pump, it's much less likely that you'll survive if you mess up the 1C here. Yeah. I think it's so we'll just much riskier. And I mean that literally and figuratively because it uses crutch. All right, so he is through Naomi. Um, say it is. Gotta wait for a spinner, unfortunately. And he's past the spinner. Meanwhile, kind of keeping an eye on etiquette and keep hats. This Rival 5 fight executed correctly is, is not too bad. Um, they both have, have have set up correctly for it. As we talked about, T-Pat did not heal, so that gave him a little bit of time back. Uh, mm -hmm. Now we've got Nelson over on Saiyan's screen. Uh, he will not go for the, the Hydro Pump range on Nelson. His special attack just is not good enough. Um, and there's a possibility of getting put to sleep here. But yes. nope, headbutt's fine. So he's gonna Thunderbolt here. He'll Scald turn two, because that that Thunderbolt didn't do more than half. And that takes care of the Hypno. Now he's got Flowbro. One Thunderbolt will take that out. Yeah, so things looking wow, pretty T-Pad and Etiquette are doing just same. Until we yeah, get to Etiquette probably the doing week just four. Fine. Um, and they will be going through um, their badge checks as well. Uh, so we can kind of keep our eye on Saiyan here for a second. He's got a couple of things to do. He's got a boulder to push. Um, pushing a boulder into a wrong place, that could never happen on a PB. No, never. Uh, <laughs> Okay, then he's got um, our good friend Alexa, who, now that I said her name, um, making sure that she is skipped. There's a very technical pass on her. Um, you dismount your Rapid Ash over in the corner. Mm -hmm. And then sneak around the sure. corner just and then enough. Sneak that around her. It, 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 yeah. Oh didn't dismount, but he was going to sneak around or try to. He's... Oh my oh, god. he gets it. That, that looks oh. like you should have been caught. Oh, oh man. All right. <laughs> and just in case that wasn't enough, here comes Caroline. Uh, Caroline is a fight that exists. Uh, so you have to set up uh, one X special attack. This has ice beam, which can 
freeze you. It has lovely kiss, which you can put you to sleep. So this Jinx can be a jerk. There's of course ice it beam. doesn't, though. No yeah. freeze. <laughs> now he's going to go for the Hydro Pump. Got it. Mm. Hydro Pump's only missed for Eevee Runners, confirmed. <laughs> I got to run Pikachu, man. <laughs> All right, so the, he should have uh, Caroline from here. He's got a Thunderbolt and then Scald the Arcanine. Um, that'll be pretty easy to take care of. He should have enough HP to not have to heal um, prior to the next fight as well. So he's in great shape. Um, we're seeing two Cs. We're seeing two C on Etiquette screen um, for Naomi, and we're seeing one C for T-Pat. Oh man, T-Pat trying to make up the time. This will be interesting. Alright, we need this Hydro Pump to hit. Okay, first, here comes the Hydro Pump. Nice. Hydro Pump hit and kills. So, so T-Pat makes up a little, a little time. time yeah. And as you can see, these two runners are now extremely close. Uh... I feel like this is going to come it, down to a little power of love in Agatha. This is this is going to be right down to the wire with these two. Maybe it's a let Caroline decide. <laughs> we just saw the Caroline fight go ideally, but Caroline can be Caroline. Man, now into the Dawson fight. I think his HP is actually high enough that even a crit he could come back from. He'd probably need to heal, but um, so he'll expect special yeah, attack I here. Fine here. This will power whip, and it didn't even crit. He's good to go. No, etiquette gets put to sleep. Up. Etiquette puts to gets put to sleep. Ooh, but paralysis on Hypno. Okay. Yep. And Not now T-Pat has snuck ever so slightly ahead. <sighs> this could go back and forth multiple times before we're done. I love it. We've got a runner challenging world record pace, and we've got two others. This is what this is what you want to see right here. Oh yeah. It's an incredible race here. Hey, it's like, not great. going for the full restore. Wow. That's interesting. Is he going to play safe strats on Agatha, or is he going full send? Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if he realized, like, hey, I'm probably not going to PB. Now I'll just play it safe. Or, you know, maybe just, just rolling into it and hoping for the best. This could be very interesting. I mean, he has played risky strats up until now. Uh, so let's let's see what he does. But you might be right. This might be a let's take this a little safer. We'll, we'll find out right now. Uh, does he deposit the Rapidash? Does he bring out a bird or a fish? Uh, OK, uh, so he's go. bringing out Lapras. That meets the, the definition of a fish. Um, Nicket and T Pat doing Alexa skip. Both of them get it. Uh, so saying we expect we'll two see Agatha. So probably not going for a PB here, which is which is just fine and understandable given this race setting. Uh, but now Caroline over on Etiquette and T Pat's screen is going to be something to watch. And meanwhile, we have Lorelai going for saying. Okay, T-Pat with the Hydro Pump. It hits and it KOs. Very nice. Same yeah, the Jinx hit. can be problematic, but things look good for both the EV runners there. Let's see where they're... 131 has special 131 attack. 131 special attack. That is not great. Um, again, he's going to have to take no. some more conservative strats. Uh, 
in Elite Four because of that. Finishing up with, in. yep, Jinx knocked out for Saiyan here, and just cruising along for Lorelei. Meanwhile, we have maybe the most fun part of the run here for the EV Epic runners. Epic Boulder race. We're, we're, we're two pushes apart between Etiquette and T-Pat right now. Um, I think Etiquette actually lost a, a push or two because he had the repel message come up. So a couple more behind now. Riveting stuff. Who, who can push the boulder faster? <laughs> Saying through Lorelei. We would expect for Bruno to be quite safe for Saiyan. Yeah, Bruno's not really something to worry about. Um, typically, if you play it safe. Even if you're playing risky, you usually don't worry too much, but Bruno is certainly the easiest of the Elite Four. He's just got to remember to Skull because he had to Psychic the Lickitung. Yeah, otherwise you run out of Psychics, and then Agatha is pretty tough. All right, there's the Skull. And that's exactly what he did. Etiquette also psyching, Psychicking the Lickitung, so he'll have to do the same thing. one of those things to be aware of. <laughs> yeah, I'm just watching this uh, Dawson fight here. I don't think that's necessarily going to come into play because I think as we've discussed, Saiyan is pr probably does not have the special attack to uh, really go full send here. T-Pat is going to pick up the full restore. Um, so we're, we would expect to see, but etiquette does not. Um, so expecting to see as those two exit Victory Road simultaneously. Uh, but T-Pat does have the full restore. So we may be seeing one C strats from T-Pat on Agatha and two C strats from etiquette. Uh, this will be very interesting to see how this goes. Uh, I would say nominal advantage to t-pat just having picked up that that full restore mm -hmm. they are synced up right now incredible now confirming what we already saw saying is going to go ahead and 2c um bring in uh again you have the option of a bird or a fish and the idea is uh you want to draw out wheezing after um after you KO the Arbok. So, essentially, uh, Weezing has Thunderbolt, which can hit for super effective damage on both Starmie and Lapras. So that's what you'll go for afterwards. Uh, so that's why you want to use that bird or a fish uh, using the two C safe strats here. We're also going to see for Lorelei here, the runners have the options of using two versus three X special attacks um, if they yep. want to risk the range on Lapras. Because using one, or the difference of one special attack is about 10 seconds. So, yeah, you know, I think skipping that does have good in. special attack. Um, I think he may set up to two. I think Etiquette pretty much locked into three, mm -hmm. uh, unless he wants to take some risks. Uh, etiquette is gonna go with two. Ooh. Okay, let's see. So he's what we're likely gonna see from him. So if you had one thirty-one, gonna... it's gonna be an eleven and sixteen for last. Yeah, this is a range right here. Nailed it. And he gets never in it. doubt. Um, now the question is the jinx. He cannot one hit KO the jinx guaranteed with Scald, so he will likely go for the hydro pump here, and he will. And he gets it. Phew. Same with T-Pat. T-Pat, I believe, did not have to Hydro Pump uh, because his special attack was good enough. But he was just able to Scald and not take that risk. 
Um, and that's that's right, he was able to scald that. So little difference little little different strats to get there for between our two runners, but they both went for the riskier plus four instead of the more safe plus six. Uh, it worked out for both of them. Uh, so what we're seeing is uh, a little bit of a lead for etiquette. Ooh, I'm nervous for these runners, man. This is this is so close. <laughs> Ugh. Our man starting Lance again. We expect Lance to be a pretty safe fight here using his um, using his Lapras. Um, and, and in this case, it's actually safe for a couple of reasons. Sans special attack is low, um, to the point where Dragonite would be a range. We will expect to see him use Ice Shard on by Lapras to do a little bit of chip damage on Dragonite, such that it is no longer a range. Ice Shard being a priority move, so Dragonite won't get any moves off. Uh, be able to yep. straight it. forward for Starmie and Lapras there taking care of yep. Lance for the most part and then the Bruno fight not a lot of surprises left both the runners are just going yep. to sweep the rest of this so we can watch Saiyan for a second um, yep. also t Pat star is 147 special attack I think is really oh my good. gosh um yeah. So nice. he has some options on champion. Um, in addition to, as we talked about before, he picked up the full restore. So my guess is he will try to one C Agatha. Um, and if he does that and does so successfully, we can expect this to actually flip from etiquette to T-Pad. But again, Agatha can be risky. So it's if he does it correctly, great. If he doesn't, it could, things could get dicey quickly. Ooh, yeah, time for the big one. Agatha fight. Yep, Agatha, this is going to be a big one. Etiquette so going for it. We've got a lot it. to look at here at once. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Agatha for etiquette and T pad. Yep, as we said, using the ice shard to chip damage the Dragonite and saying is through. It is one seeing with no full restore. I know. Oh my. I, I was like, am I seeing this right? That is a huge YOLO. Okay, he is hoping for power of love power here. Power of love, come on. Which T Pat gets! T Pat gets the power of love, and he's just gonna psychic this and take out the Arbok. Etiquette oh meanwhile gosh. is pretty much left. Oh, oh he okay, gets Etiquette the power gets it. Of love. It's a little late, but better late than never. A little late, but it's okay. I think it's safe to say he was 100% relying on that. Oh my goodness. Wow. t -Pat did t -Pat. get the better fight. He got that power Slightly up ahead. Yeah. So he pulls ahead, but this is not over by any stretch. Meanwhile, just to update, Saiyan is now starting the champion fight. Um, again, with 2C, this is quite safe, assuming this Pidgeot does not crit turn one. Both the runners, well, I guess all three of them, but especially the EV runners right now, getting the turnarounds for Starmie, which costs two seconds every time. So, fight's yeah. a little bit slower now that they've leveled up. And you could hydro pump these to try to save those two seconds, but usually <laughs> that's reserved just for. Honestly, just for etiquette these. could do that. <laughs> Trying to make up that difference, but it's too late now, of course. Just played it safe and smart. Yeah. All right. Uh, meanwhile, Saiyan is on a good trajectory on his um, on his champion fight. We fully uh, expect that to be safe. I think to uh, seeing um, the Lance fight because the special attack solo versus T-Pat can just roll in with uh, Starmie by itself. 
up. Oof. So traditionally how this fight looks, if you don't do the 2C strats, which t Pat's going to do 1C, is you just use a ton of items at first with your um, Star Army. So you use X Special Defense, X Speed, 3X Special Attacks, and then you finally start sweeping the Pokemon. Um, but since Etiquette's... Wait, is he using the 2C? No, Etiquette is 1C? One. Yeah, he just brought the Pokemon out for 2C just in case. Oh my goodness! Must have been a just in case I need it, you know. So etiquette just knocks out the Cedra. And just How is this wow, Saiyan also just finished the last fight. Wow, so it's gonna clock Saiyan in. is gonna go sub three. Sub three, insane, oh, insane run. What a him. race! Vive la France! Excellent race from Saiyan. Um, okay, so now we're seeing the 2C from Etiquette using Porygon. This one is one I have not seen before. Um, but using it just as a, as a companion poke, um, going ahead and, um, getting the X special attack in so he can guarantee the Gyarados, Charizard, and Dragonite. Um, obviously, he will lose some time here to T-Pat because he had to bring out the second controller. We are coming up on time for Saiyan. Uh, T-Pat finishing up Dragonite. Yeah, and then Etiquette's got... What a race from Saiyan. 259.44 so. yeah. is what I had. Insane uh, run. Very well done. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Incredible. And we'll get we'll get saying in a second, uh, but I think we wanna do this uh th these last champion fights justice uh between Etiquette and T Pat. Uh so T Pat into the champion fight and I think I saw one C from him. I would imagine so, right? And yeah, just just for anyone asking, um, the Pico World Record is two fifty nine fourteen by Saiyan. So, I mean, this was yes, really so really good run. This, it was absolutely pressing that run. Okay, T Pat one seeing, um, so he will X Bedef for here first to try and take some of the damages off damage off Air Slash. The problem is if Air Slash starts critting. Um, and it's actually the same for Etiquette as well, because they're both one seeing this. Um, these guys do not want crits under any circumstances, because Air Slash will take out from full. Oh my god! And he's <gasps> crit! Back. Back crit. Oh, no. And he has no more Pokemon! There's no more Pokemon! Oh my god! Etiquette can safely in no. second! Oh. oh my goodness! Wow! never over till it's over oh, holy crap oh my goodness i assume if etiquette's watching screen stream he's gonna take this super yeah, slow and be he, careful uh, yeah he already had the two c out he, he that was oh the only gosh. way he was gonna win oh my oh goodness my. oh my gosh terrible crit timing or great crit oh. timing, depending on who you're cheering for in your pickups. Oh my goodness. But it feels so bad here. Ugh. Oh. Just in shock here. This is this goes to show you just how this game can be it can be cruel. Um it you know, in a race setting like this, you know, it, you don't want to see those crits, and yeah. in this game, it's Incredibly a 1 in 24 chance to get a crit, but... Oh. Just a tough way to, to unfortunately, not get second place, uh, yeah. but what an incredible race this has been. All three of these runners. Uh... I know, and T-Pat went through so many... <laughs> So much bad luck throughout the whole run for him. 
and it's just God, really, really hate to see that. Yeah. It's... <sighs> wow. Wow. I think this Arya and you and I are both. Uh, we're 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 processing this as we see it. <laughs> uh, this is uh, wow. Uh, it's what's great about this game, and that we've, we've been talking about it throughout. It's it's a different run every time. It keeps you on your toes. You have to prepare for eventualities, good and bad. Uh, and that's gonna finish up that'll... for etiquette. Yep. Taking out the Slowbro, the last Pokemon. So the th low 304 would be my estimate, which. Yeah. Well, Great you know, it's gonna be second place here. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot really of adaptation for a pretty bad EV, pretty. Eh, star. Mess star. So. Um, just shows the extensive game knowledge that he has to be able to pull this out. Like, getting a 304 with the luck he had is pretty incredible, I would say, to be honest. Hello. Oh, congrats, congrats on your insane race. Well done. Uh, yeah, I got lucky. Like, yeah. What, uh, I mean, uh, I just got lucky, I don't know. <laughs> Last time so... he was uh, pretty bad, but uh, otherwise, uh, the catch count was fine. So, well, you know what they say is skill is being able to use the luck to full potential. So yeah, you got lucky, but you played it so, so well. Mm. Very nice. Were you on, on PB slash world record pace? Uh, sorry? But did you have that you were on world record PB pace? Uh, no, I'm, I, I don't okay. check uh, life speed. Life speed. Okay, yeah, so you weren't even the checking end, the split. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that was... To get sub-3 in a race setting like this, that was a great mm. time. Uh, were you thinking of going, you know, full send there at the end at all? Uh, no. Never. <laughs> never, okay. Always uh, Laplace uh, for League. Okay. Well, that yeah, was that we was saw you do the, like, the 1C... Um like 1C earlier fights, so we were thinking maybe yeah, you'd go because, for it. Yeah, uh, because <laughs> I got uh, good defense, so I can Giovanni uh, only uh, oh, yeah, yeah, attack, yeah. so it's fine. Yeah, the Doug Trio. <laughs> that one was yeah. really close. Not yeah. even using the extra defense. So did you calculate like, that that had I mean, no uh, my, my thinking was uh, if I get in range, I uh, send out uh, two controllers and I finish the fight, you know? So okay. that was fine. One of just, uh, you know, multiple really good moves that you made throughout that run. And so, I mean, mm, thank you. Congratulations. You know, sub three in a race. Thank you. Um, you know, well done. Mm -hmm. Were you watching Etiquette? Were you watching the stream with Etiquette and T-Pad on it as uh, well? Yeah, T-Pad uh, got very unlucky at the end. So. Yeah. Man, they're so close the whole time. Yeah. So it was Sync uh, at the beginning of uh, Elite Four, I think. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Etiquette, I think he's joining us now. Etiquette. Hello. What a, hello. What a battle you and T-Pad had. Talk to us about it. Okay, so... I want to preface by saying, I don't know if this is the case, but before the match, uh, it was mentioned that I was like 20 seconds ahead sync-wise. So my assumption throughout the entire end game was I was 20 seconds behind T-Pat, which is why I made the gamble for skipping full restore. Um, and then once I didn't get the optimal power of love, and I saw T-Pat got it, I was like, I just need to finish the run, get a solid time, because my first round time yeah. was not good. Um, mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, for tiebreaker purposes, we dropped the lowest time. So like, as long as I do better than a 306.30, I'm good. So I don't need to like risk end game. Um, and then I put the stream back up when I was done with setup on champion. And I was like, oh no. Uh, you know, because that, that's really, really unfortunate, but, um, but yeah, aside from that, so like, were... I, oh yeah, go ahead. 
you were going to two C champion regardless. No, so I was I was planning to not two C anything. Um, but because I didn't get the best possible Agatha, I was like, hey, my okay. chance is done. The only way I can win against T Pat is if he dies. Um, at that mm. point, so I was like. If he dies, I need to be alive. So that was like my thought process there. But at the same time, I, I wasn't expecting it to happen. I was like, I just need to get a solid time for my average. Um, and yeah, just sort of unfortunate how that all unfolded. Um, they're seeing our streams were actually synced. OK, interesting. <laughs> so uh, I it was. probably played played a little bit riskier than I was supposed to, but you know what? Uh, it worked out. I think I I was surprised. So I approached this race a little bit differently than usual. Usually I have the stream up the whole time, um, but I had it closed until Starmie. I saw T-Pat and I were kind of like right around the same time, but I ha saw his star was way better than mine. Um, so I closed the stream again, and then I opened it up um, in Victory Road, and that's when I saw how close we ended up being. So I don't know, like, what? I guess T-Pat was ahead of me slightly with more Pokemon. What happened during the Starmie section for T-Pat? You mine had was, a better uh, had, had Archer a time on Archer fight. Too. Yeah, your Archer uh, fight was good. His Archer fight was awful. Gotcha. Um, he was really yeah, bad luck because he ran out of the, heals. The, the, gotcha. The, the, yeah, I ran out of heals. I was out of super potions. Gotcha. Oh, hey, yeah. T-Fat. <laughs> I'm just listening in to commentary. <laughs> I'm so the into it. Um, but, yeah, and then uh, early game was bad. Uh, <laughs> like, really bad. <laughs> like, I I was like, I'm going to check my, my EV. If it's minus special attack or attack, I'm going to use the, the uh, backup. I don't care if it's minus speed, so of course I get minus speed. Um, funny enough, I was minus speed, but alert to sounds, so I actually gained a speed AV, uh, which mattered in, like, two spots. But, um, but yeah, so I I had that bad EV. My first catch was just abysmal, the, the Pikachu that broke out. Um, yeah, I, that was tough. I, I was... I had a decent-ish Mount Moon. I decided not to catch Clefable, because I was like, it's not that likely to get in and the experience isn't going to help that much um so i think that was the right call and then i just i hit the i messed up the vermilion skip and yes. i was kind of like well what so what was funny is i was like not like lounging but like i was you know you know everyone knows how the cerulean section is it's not the most enticing section of the run <laughs> so i was like kind of like laid back or whatever um and i didn't adjust my posture before Route 6. And so Route 6 went okay. Um, and then I started to do the skip, and I, like, I don't know, something happened. Like, I slipped a little bit to the side, whatever. I hit the one on the, the left, and I'm like, ah, oh, crap. So I, like, go to sit up, and I whack my arm against my desk, and the switch pops out of the dock. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, oh my no. god, what is happening? <laughs> um, oh, no. Yeah, uh, so that was well, if you if it's... you saw the capture thing, that was what, what that was. Um, and then after that, everything was like, my hideout section was actually for the EV I had. I thought my hideout section went pretty well. Tower just had like the one issue where I got paralyzed fully turn one on Jesse and James, but other than that, that section was really good. So yeah, I, I agreed. Yeah, I, I, it's somewhat reassuring to know that. Uh... Even top level runners sometimes can can oopsie on some of those skips. Uh, as somebody who is a, a, a personal uh, advocate and proponent of doing an oopsie on one of those skips once in a while, <laughs> um, so no, it, it was a great run. Um, mm -hmm. you no, know, Rio four twenty five, not hitting for billion skip, um, and you know again I, hydro pumps. I actually just killed this. I <laughs> and li li okay, so I have 161 special attack in case anybody's wondering, and I'm level 55, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah, we're just gonna go plus four on the file. Um, 
Yeah. In case then... anybody's wondering if you have to redo the E4 with no elixir, just super effective. Literally everything. Yeah, that should that should usually work. It's um, I have exactly enough. I'm gonna run out of psychics uh, on champ here. Gotcha. Um, and then <laughs> I am now two for two on doing boat rival with one controller because of the stupid Eevees I've been getting. <laughs> yeah, we, that's what we that's what we thought here too because uh, your Eevee was a little on the slower side. I'm like, okay. That's why he's yeah. that's why he's doing that. So yeah, that's and it, not, yeah, not on that. I uh, so I, I almost did it one controller because I got the glowing Chansey on six, but since I had zero special attack AVs, I still didn't kill. Still wouldn't have killed the uh, Pidgeot uh, or the Pidgeotto. So it sucked. I was at the correct level, but my EV just wasn't good enough. Man, gotcha. my Eevees have sucked this tournament. <laughs> actually, I'm bleeding that split. Played. Otherwise, it actually ruins everything. Yeah, because in round one, I was minus special yeah. attack with zero AVs and attack. And this one, I was minus speed with zero AVs and special attack. Oh. Okay, I'm going to complain about this because it'll make it better in the next round. <laughs> oh, if yeah, you're going to complain about that, I would like to complain about my stars because... This one was my best one at 1037. So. It was painful to see. <laughs> Can I complain about yeah, chances? Because somebody in chat like came in that, and uh, was like, any chances today, Kappa? And I was like, Can we ban this person? <laughs> uh, T Pat, I think after that run, you have a right to complain about pretty much whatever you want. Uh, pretty much everything. Yeah, I like, did have a lapse in focus after that chancy, and I accidentally caught a second Clefairy. And I literally almost DNF the run in Mount Moon. Really? Like, I'm not even joking oh. about that. I almost just, like, I almost just manually took the uh, switch out of the dock. Because I was not feeling it after the Chansey runaway. It really messed me up from the beginning. So to even oh, be well, remotely in cause... contention for anything was a miracle. But... Obviously, it, uh, you lose 11 minutes when you have to go through the whole Elite Four a second time. Well, it was quite a battle between you and Etiquette um, down the stretch there. Unfortunately, you you took the dreaded Air Slash crit from Pidgeot. Um, how much did that just... you fall? Go ahead. Oh, no, no. no, no. Keep, uh, continue. I'll answer your question. Oh yeah, how did how much were you following along on with what etiquette was doing, and did that change how you were what your strats were at all? So I was following the stream second by second. Uh, I was literally counting the seconds from like Koga onward. Oh wow, yeah. Um, I I probably watched etiquette's game more than my own <laughs> because it was just. I wanted I wanted to know exactly how many seconds. I think there was one point where it's like, oh, I'm going into the Elite Four, and I measured it at like 2.4 seconds. So I was just locked in to everything Etiquette was doing. So it was kind of the opposite of what his strat was. Did it affect my strats? No. I just I just had to put my foot down and just go for it completely. Um, and Etiquette was completely right to when it, when I saw he was doing the two C strats, it was like, okay, I did everything correct. Balls in my court. All I need to do is not die, and I wrap up the second place. And of course, like it was just that was just the icing on the cake of this whole run. I could not catch a break at all. Like start to finish was just miserable. Like, the only thing good that happened in this run was I high-rolled Rival, and I was like, ooh, goody, plus attack. And then I crit him for the two-turn, and then I didn't get plus attack, and it was just miserable from there on out. And just, yeah, I couldn't catch yeah, a break, you, and it just you were culminated in the final death. Uh, you were fighting adversity, you know, that, to your point, that chancy, uh, we were, we were, as we were talking... As it was going, we're like, oh, no, oh, no, it's about to run. Um, I couldn't believe and... it. Like, it's favored to get in, too. What's that percentage? Like, 74% or something to get in the excellent throw? 
It pops out and it immediately screams at me. And I'm like, you are kidding me. And then it breaks out another like super favorable catch and then runs. So yeah, I mean that happened and, and I just, I, I wanted to just stop right there. Cause I just knew that my mentality was going to be, wow, I have to sit here and be miserable for the next two and a half hours. And I didn't really want to do that, but against that thought, those negative thoughts, I was like, I'll just keep going, you know, screw it. I'll, I'll see what I can salvage out of this. And I salvaged plenty, but every moment where it was like, oh, I can get something a little bit better to happen. And I think that moment for me was rival four, where I'm getting in the tower. I'm like, okay, I had actually a pretty good rock tunnel section. You know, my my mental strength has stabilized and I get thunder punch crit by the Raichu and then take the double edge uh knock myself out and i was like you are kidding me like that exact moment where i thought i salvaged everything it all came crashing back down and then i go through the hideout section and i'm salvaging everything because i'm saving turns and i get to j and j and i'm like all right all i need is a two turn here and it's great turns out my rhyhorn was minus attack and i didn't ko the wheezing on on kind of like a mixed strat. And I was like, damn, like every moment that I thought I was getting close, something terrible happened. And then I get to Archer. It's like, oh, I'm a couple seconds ahead. I'm out of heels. This is going to go terribly. It was just those stumbling blocks were just so severe at so many different points of the run. Uh, it just, I don't know. I've had enough advers adversary for two tournaments. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you guys all you guys put on a heck of a show today. I mean, even despite the adversity that that I was gonna say all of you experienced, I'm I'm kind of exempting Saiyan from that because that was just a beast of a run. Saiyan's um, cracked. I can't I can't if Saiyan if Saiyan does that, like I, I can't win. I can't win the tournament. Yeah, Amber had that. Uh, going into Victory Road, he was three seconds behind world record. Like, that's... I, I don't know what you're supposed to do with that. Um, but I guess just kind of going out on this, um, how does this, if at all, affect your your viewpoint, your strategy going forward? And I'll open it up to all three of you. Um, I mean, well, I guess I can go first. Uh, so the interesting thing, um, so I've crunched the numbers a little bit. Uh, I didn't want to say anything because I'm, I'm not 100% confident in them. It was all through like random simulations. But my belief is that um, eight points is almost guaranteed to make it to top nine. So uh, nine points is guaranteed. Eight is like very close. So in my shoes, um, having five points right now, this time is probably going to be ahead of the median. I would have to guess. Uh, but even if not, like it'll be pretty close. Um, I'll probably have five points coming out of this, which means I need to win one of my next two matches to make it to top nine, uh, which obviously you want as many points as possible. So you have like the best seeding in top nine, but I would take anything right now. Cause I think I'm kind of on the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> I say saying you've got a i mean you're at, sitting on six points now that probably means uh that probably means a, a challenging round three for you mm, yeah but uh i'm doing the this tournament for fun uh, don't really care uh, for the point yeah if i win yeah, it's good as always uh, it's fine it's it's certainly going to be fun to watch. I mean, all of your matches going forward, but that one, you know, round three, presumably there will be a couple of people who are sitting on six points. Uh, there will be fireworks. Um, yeah. So th no, this mm. has been and, and you know, Zyron and I, we've 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 had so much fun just watching this these last three hours and watching elite level gameplay. I know it didn't all nice. go according to plan for the three of you. Uh, but it it uh, it was fun to watch, and I, I probably echoing the sentiment of, of chat in the stream that this was this was one heck of a match. So thanks for giving nice. us quite a show today. Yeah, that thanks was incredible to, to watch. The guns. Um, 
I'm going to yeah, go watch uh, the tennis. Bye. <laughs> yes, 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 enjoy that. We've got a couple of upcoming matches. Um, uh, Jay Tattles, Furious, and Ergote are on... Uh, this, on the Deuce, I'll call it, T Pokemon Speedruns TV 2, uh, and they're ongoing, so head over in that direction. Uh, we've also got a match tonight, which will be a really good one, Etchy, Headstrong, and Aspect. Um, Sandy, Kerbis, and Tucker Lorat uh, come back for us on Tuesday night. And if you liked listening to myself and Ozyron, we will be... Uh, squaring off against each other, uh, along with Aloe, on Saturday. I believe it's Saturday morning. So uh, looking forward to reprising that with you, Yoziron. This has been, a, as I said, so much fun. Um, and yeah, go enjoy that. Uh, go enjoy that Jay Tattles Furious Ergote match. It'll be a good one. Yeah, so thanks for tuning in, everyone. It's always fun to commentate these. And uh... Head on over and hopefully we'll see you in the Speedruns TV 2 channel.